and welcome to episode 345 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, creator of the Instagram comic Black, and joining me as always is the creator of the webcomic Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. The writer, reviewer, and sexy mother, it's Jammer. Tony Esmond. Hello. <laughs> I made it sound like that was censored then. Yeah, so that's quite yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect it acting. Sounds like I, I'm editing, but I thought I'd better not say a naughty word. 10 seconds into the show um, <laughs> but this week we're also joined by a friend of the show fellow podcaster and goodest of eggs it's tom from that comic smell hello oh sorry i was just huffing some comics there how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> always on brand yeah. <laughs> he's huffing the sequentials um, my god don't some of them smell good tom oh, um, what in terms of like that comic smell let's let's get into this before we get into the rest of the show um that comic smell obviously quite a specific name for a podcast and we all know Mm. when you get a there's different sort of smells for comics and like you know whether it be the type of paper it's printed on or whether it's an old sort of you know bronze age comic etc what's your favorite smell of comic oh um well, I do like a good smell of an old Beano or Dandy that's been sitting for about twenty years in somebody's loft. Um, <laughs> okay, is wow. good, but but I, I I got I got a bit ruined recently. Uh, oh. Nan- Nando brought some um, Justice League Internationals from Spain, and they're just printed just ever so slightly differently. And oh my god, the smell of them! I mean, it keeps me awake at night. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. Like, there's sometimes I'll wake up and go, "Those Justice League Internationals, they were just something else." Honestly, <laughs> comics from other countries do smell differently. Yeah, I, I haven't bought comics, you know, on holiday in France and stuff. There is a different smell to them. It's, yeah, it definitely. Must be yeah, the inks that are being used, surely. Yeah, it's, they're, yeah, they're yeah. crisp as anything as well. Like, the, honestly, I know Nando takes care of his comics anyway, but these things literally looked like they were just fresh out the box. Like, the the ink just stays. It's unbelievable we were comparing them between the the us ones and the, the reprints and stuff and they were just phew, amazing but i can actually still smell them as i'm talking about them just now <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you that's one thing that comic mark like the comics there yeah uh, you yeah. get them out and you're like fuck me like this like is this just fresh off the the press because it looks like no one's even looked at this yeah uh, it is part of the nostalgia isn't it when you go to a comic mart and you pull those back issues out there is a little waft as long as you are far enough away from the person next to you and the <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah you don't want that waft. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't yeah. want a little waft that you get from that but you know the comic itself yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something about those old those old 70s books or you know, who does the most huffing yeah. on the show is it, i'm guessing yeah. it's mike uh, no, it's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, for, I'm forever getting into trouble. Like, oh, there he goes. He's gone. Yeah. Like, I'm just yeah. sitting with it on my face. I mean, like, he was huffing. Dave gives you one of those knowing. Tonight. You know, looks. everyone heard him huffing live on air. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I think uh, my, Mike was uh, one that was like, oh, I, I have to admit, it was about, about sort of, two or three months into doing the podcast. So I have to admit, I didn't actually smell the comics until I started coming along. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't believe it. Like you're never even tempted. Like <laughs> not even just this a little is, bit. Yeah. Does it ever get you aroused, Mike? Let's ask him. Text him in a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I know it one place definitely is, does, Dave. Yeah. It's, it, they've oh, got yeah. no smell, but it does have a load of comics. Where's that, Dan? Oh my God, where? Comic House. Oh wow! Hey. Yes, of course. Our, our sponsors. <laughs> Every what's week. happened what's happening uh, well what, what's happening Tony? We're, talk, we're talking about the indie comic marketplace where the difference don't turn around everything i say and, uh... <laughs> well funny you should say that tony yeah well yeah yeah well it's actually funny you should say that tony um <laughs> well, you're a robot because and and you can find comics with robots, robots in on Comic House, <laughs> our lovely sponsor. Yes, if you go to ComicHouse.com, there's a huge selection of titles on the Comic House database. If you self-publish, list your book on there. It's another avenue to start selling your book. But please, please, please add your books or join up and read more books on the Comic House app. It's brilliant. It's like Netflix for comics, only £3 a month. You get access to an enormous library of digital indie comics, which is being added to all the time. And uh, Dan, what can they find on there at the moment? Well, I want to highlight three titles from authors nope. that have their, their 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 names in the titles of the comics. We've got Frank the writer. He's got a series of uh, comics. Who is that? There. Who is he? We don't know. We have to get in touch with him. Frank, get in touch with us. They said it couldn't got, happen. 
the, the legend William Shatner presents oh. the te- Tech World Chronicles. Uh, I think there's ten issues out, and uh, we've got William F. Nolan's Dark Universe comics mm. from Blue Water Comics. Right. Blue Water, uh, they're a class act. Yeah, and they're all on. Uh, there's many Blue Water titles on uh, Comic House, and they're ready for you to check out today. Yes, yeah. indeed. We um, should read. We should have a month where we do, a week where we read Blue Water because they do some mental stuff. <laughs> yeah, does, I agree. Them- is that them to do like the Kim Kardashian comic? And yeah, stuff? and all that sort of thing. <laughs> maybe, we should, I remember maybe we should call it the Blue, the Blue Watershed. No, actually, that sounds a bit dirty, doesn't it? Yeah, let's use it then. Yeah, 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 yeah. do it. We'll, we'll There's it. one here that's got Dirk, ben, Dirk Benedict in the 20, 25th century. It's got to be good. It's got to be that's good. A, that's that's be a sign of quality. We'll find, find, we'll find out soon. But in, until then, you should find out before us by uh, going to comichouse.com. He's, he's a robot. He's like starting a 14-day free trial. Um Basically, the value for money is ridiculous because there's all those comics and tons it's of marketing small, machine, small press, and indie books. Yeah. Well, someone fucking has to be. <laughs> <laughs> and, Can uh, you get uh, comics from the comic that comic smell uh, creators on there? Yeah, Tom. you can. Yeah, um, I think Dave's got all his up there, if I remember oh, rightly. Well, yes. he's got he's got a majority of them up there. Um, I know. I think the Tay Bridge one went up not that long ago. I don't know if he's put Booze Ha Ha up yet. This is Dave that, Robertson. Is yeah. Dave yeah. Robertson, yes. I that's think the... I've read Tay Bridge on there. So yes. that's, that's definitely on there. Okay. Yeah. I think you look Fantastic. Up, look up Fred Egg Comics. It tends to, I think it comes up anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. You can search and creators on there as well, can't you? Yeah. 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 And if you're a creator, you, you can add your bios and stuff as well so people can find links to your other stores, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, seriously, if you've got digital comics just gathering dust on your hard drives, add them up there. You never know. You never know who might become a fan of your art, your work just because yeah. they clicked on a link. Um, but something that we spoke about then that I thought, oh, that's an interesting topic to get started because we do have a little bit of a. Uh, we, we're going to be talking about genres this this week, but and we're going to mm. get into that uh, in a bit. But Dan, you're reading out all those the name books, you know, like yes. William Shatner presents and. And anyone who's read a previews has always seen like that the, in the latter pages when you look at the indie books, there was lots of, you know, the Vincent Price presents or there was all. I was showing of, you an Elvira yeah. comic earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but when it comes to those um, putting like a an actor's name above the comic, how imp- how well do you think those books do? Fucking not at all. I'm guessing. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, half the time it seems like. It's the name, but when you see when you see like the interiors of some of these books, no offense to anyone who's created any of these books, by the way. Um, <laughs> Huge offense coming. <laughs> yeah, but, but sometimes, like when I've seen them in the past, you think, oh, but, you know, what's this going to be like? And you open it up, and it's not quite. It doesn't quite deliver. It doesn't reflect yeah. the cover. Put it that way. No, no. say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. scanning through. There's another one. Uh, Roger Corman presents the Death Sport Games. I mean, if you you know what you're going to get from Roger Corman. Oh, I read one of them. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't very good. Wasn't great. Yeah. I remember them, but uh, <laughs> you know, if they're using kind of like a name that's fairly like, well, pretty indifferent to that person. I'm yeah, al- yeah. I'm always like dubious of the presents anyway. Yeah, it's like rock and roll yeah. comics. Do you remember that? Do you remember those comics? Yeah. We talked about them. Years yeah, ago. I think yeah, they're. Them, yeah. I think there's something. There's something to do with Blue Wall. I know there's some connection. Maybe they certainly put some of those rock and roll comics out because the dude who ran that company got murdered. Fucking hell! Oh Christ! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. One of us could get one of us could get murdered one day. Uh, just uh, if then someone would make a comic out of it. Let's hope, eh? Let's hope. <laughs> uh, Bags, don't, 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 don't be worried, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably, I'll probably have to go with Tom. Yeah, Tom's gonna be, he's, yeah. he's gonna be one to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, oh, that's great. Thanks, lads. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks yeah. for coming on, Tom. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Tom. Yeah. Uh, see you soon. Um, <laughs> you no, make but, it quick. But, you know, have you ever been... Uh, <laughs> touche. Um, have you ever been drawn in to pick up and look at a comic book purely based on that sort of like, you know, a, a William Shatner Presents? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Loads. William Shatner is an obvious go-to for you, Tony. But you know, but I mean, all, all sorts of people. So, like that Roger Corman thing, I'd probably look at it. Then you get occasionally you get you got we got comics like Larry Niven's Ringworld, you know, and things like that yeah, from the author. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no pervs. The uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, so sometimes if it's got you know, there was that one that I picked up, Glenn Danzig, and I was like, this is going to be oh good. yeah. So Glenn Danzig is that the one where he lived with what's his name? 
Um, no, that... he, he did like a, it was semi smut comic. I'll put it up in one of our competitions of like the worst comic you can find. It, it, it <laughs> no, no, narrowly Dan, when lost. You, when you picked it up, are, are you a fan of Danzig's music or Danzig himself? Uh, I quite like Mother, the song. That's the only one I can really recall. Who, he did a com- Wasn't there a comic about him living with the bloke from Black Flag? I don't What's know, that? man. Could, could, yeah. could have been. I mean, you've there read is, every yeah, comic yeah. in existence, Tony, so it probably... I haven't read all Blue Water, which is why we got to get them on. Yeah. What, Danzig, Danzig meets Henry Rollins? Yeah, weren't they living together? There was like a sort of romance comic or something about Yeah, you're right. Yeah. See, you're right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it now. What's it called? What? What's it? What's it? It's called uh, Henry and Glenn Forever. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, it's quite who's a, who's a, who's What's who's that a available on, dude? If you just Googled, Googled that. Googled it, no, that's yeah. quite well known. That's like a, is it a Fanagraphics book or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like Fanagraphics. What? <laughs> who's what? the creator? Uh, I'm just looking at these. There's, there's actually, I've Googled it and there's absolutely loads of images of it. So yeah, there must be quite a lot of it. Yeah, it's yeah. quite cool, apparently. Tom yeah, Neely. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognise this right enough. Yeah. I keep meaning to buy it and have a read of it. It looks right. I kind of like that idea. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. that's I wouldn't want to watch one. it. Do you know what I mean? What's the name of that artist? I have to send this shit. <laughs> I have to send this picture in the chat because uh, I, I, I don't want to... No, I can't fucking send it. Fuck you. <laughs> 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 send it on the WhatsApp and I'll forward it to Tom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Yes, so th- this is the sort of high quality content that you get this from an audio. This audio is chat. Been <laughs> already um, off, off to a winner. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but yeah, I just thought as we were talking about that, I've, I've, you know, it's these little questions that I've always pondered about because a name comic is a staple part of comic books, like dating all the way back, isn't it? It'll be hmm. perfect for romance week coming up. Mm. Yeah, that's well, yeah, good we, shot. We, we Blue water, get, yeah, yeah, we might be getting romantic soon. Mm. Um, but before then. Um, we're not. We <laughs> I keep talking about the genre month. We got to get into it at some point and, and show yes, this yeah. year. Sorry, but sorry, we are going to be talking uh, genres, um, in comics this month. And what are our favourites? You know, and uh, yes. I think there's probably going to be a lot, a lot of crossover. The way we um, mm. set it up, um, we're each going to pick three. But of course, we'll probably have a lot of the same anyway. It's not yeah, like everyone, so if we, everyone's going to have different ones. Yeah, we'll right. go around. Should we go three, two, one, and we we'll start with the guests? But if the, if you if if for example someone says another one that you've got, even if it's your first one, you've got to join in. Otherwise, we'll be forever, won't we? Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah. some something I wanted to point out first. With, okay, with, all right, with, all right. With genres. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, the old Huffington Post over there. <laughs> well, hold on a minute, lads. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> This wasn't written down in the text message I got from Tony. <laughs> oh. Tony, you said he was going to behave. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, um, I, do you know, you you put it, you put this to me, and then said about the the favorite genres. Yeah, and I, I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. I was like, well, what what def, what defines? It uh, sounds ridiculous, but what defines a genre in comics? I um, think that's the perfect question. To well, start, I think so. Go on. Yeah, we can, almost, we can almost. We can almost. You can almost make a genre up, can't you? You can almost yeah, say, you know. Yeah. Well, this is, this is what I stumbled into. swords. You know, yeah. it's like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that I stumbled into. I, I just kind of, you know, the old cursory Google search to see. And uh, because there were loads of different sites saying many different things about different genres. I yeah. mean, Comixology has two pages of them, but mm. they also list horror, vampires, and zombies as three separate genres. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's on the free comic book day website they said that the only genres that exist in comics are superhero manga slice of life humor non-fiction science fiction slash fantasy as one genre and horror that's a load of old shit isn't it yeah, yeah. that is a load of old shit yeah. that, that's walking into a water stand and just thinking hold on they've put the fucking fantasy and horror books on one shelf what? I was yeah. going to try and annoy <laughs> someone by saying what's your favourite genre I was going to say manga so that well actually manga isn't a genre yeah actually manga, <laughs> manga, just, yeah, manga just means comics yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. but you would be surprised <laughs> that was <laughs> Man- manga was manga was actually the one that was like consistent on every single one of them and I just thought that's not a genre yeah. like no, it's not, not a, because, not a because within manga they have genres exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talking about one earlier wasn't I when I bought I bought that that book um yesterday called ragnarok and um someone on the one of the slacks said to me oh is that bl and i had to look up what bl meant and that's a whole genre of yeah manga yeah. 
yeah. It's a bit yeah. weird. It's like, what's your favourite genre of comic? You say comics. So yeah. that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My answer would normally be your mama. That would yeah. be my, my answer. Yeah, but it was like... <laughs> You know, putting science fiction and fantasy together as well. Like, that's two separate genres. Yeah. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and what, what do you put monsters under? Barry Windsor Smith. Yeah, because exactly. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, you know, we've yeah. absolutely ruined the uh, format of our <laughs> concepts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck it. Let's just go to the recommend. Our whole show is shit. So, what's the point of doing it? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Straight on to the shout outs. <laughs> if, right. if pushed, if pushed. And you have to name a genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, the other, the other caveat too is, how has it influenced your buying habits now and in the past? So that's the thing that we should discuss as well. What, what you know, when you go and buy something, or you online or in a shop, how does it influence what you pick up and look at, what you take to the till, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Good. Mm. I could quite easily go first, and I imagine as many of us are going to say the same thing, and that's uh, superheroes. Okay, superheroes is my number one. Yeah, that my number one. Absolutely. We're going Fucking three to large. one, Dan. Okay. Do we have to do them in order? Do we have to do them in order? Because well, it was, it was sort of like what, what I, I think know, for we, us we'll leave that important. one to the end because that's like absolutely fucking tight. Ty- if you're Western readers, I imagine that's going right. to be a, a massive one. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, you know, just in case anyone was listening to the rules yeah. earlier, the uh, um, <laughs> okay. obviously not me. <laughs> I thought we could go with the guest first. What do you think? Good shout, good shout. <laughs> hey, Tom, what would be your third favourite genre? Um, I probably have to go with humour. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe same. same. I, th- I think um, right. I think humour can fall under a lot of different categories as well, though, because I think that can encompass, um, like, you can get like funny and humorous. Anthropomorphic humor, yeah, yeah. sci-fi yeah. humor, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I, would, yeah humor. I would totally agree as well because when I was looking through some of the books that I like, and even if they're like sort of action-oriented books, for me they're they're funny. They're it's because they're funny. That's why mm. I, I like them. So yeah. yeah, do I class them as humor books? I mean, I, I I would agree with you as well. I'd probably I'd probably put humor as mine. It's a weird one, isn't it? Because you can class some James Bond films, especially the Roger Moore ones, as comedies. God, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, um, yeah. even like Superman Four or something like that has its comedic elements. And, you know, and the comics mm. are the same, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes they're a mix up, aren't they? And that's okay. Mm. You get stuff as broad reaching as like the uh, Perry Fellowship Bible or yeah. uh, Penguins, yeah. which is a free panel one, to the to longer form stuff, which works yeah. on a different level, but just as well. No, I think magazine. It- you know yeah i think it helps as well that as ki- like as kids and teenagers and stuff that's the kind of stuff that's marketed and, and put towards you is the funny pages hmm. as well you know that's the that's probably what most people see first is especially like so britain especially you you'll see like Bino and dandy and everything and they're humor strips yeah um and then you got like viz and 2000 even some of the strips in 2000 ad and oh, stuff as well are, yeah. all, are all humor Hooligans, um, haircut, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's probably it's probably one of the first things that you would encounter. I mean, it comes from it comes from the whole name, comic, as well, mm. you know. It's mm. the it's the comic pages. So yeah. Um yeah, I think humor's definitely got to be the the uh my 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 pick of choice for, for number three. Number That's three. Same for you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the the kind of it's such a kind of a, a broad subject i mean like from reading kate beaton stuff which is kind of <laughs> completely different to reading something like rufus marigold but each one fucking absolutely makes me crack up and kind of uh, i think over the years i've got kind of a bit more of a broad uh taste for the kind of uh, the, the humor comics where it used to be a bit more kind of pure well, still is but like <laughs> <clears throat> there'd be more stuff highbrow stuff which i kind of laugh at they, they kind of like bring up cringeworthy uh dramatic situations that it is supposed to elicit humor but not in the same way of a kind of like a, a bawdy joke or a, a visual gag do you know what i mean yeah uh, what was that europe comics one we liked about the golfers i know you reviewed it recently Arsholes, um, wasn't it Arsholes. Arsholes. Yeah. yeah yeah i like that <laughs> that was fucking gold that was <laughs> that was really good yeah really well done and and like all these kind of like they can span genres within themselves because mm-hmm. yeah what yeah. would you call that sl- it's not really a slice of life but it's kind of m- more drama I, I don't know it's a hard one to describe yeah, yeah. it's almost sketch comedy isn't it in yeah a way. yeah it's one long one yeah, yeah. In a way. yeah 
Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Reading through, like, sometimes you get the, uh, on Facebook, you know, I've liked a couple of those, the the web comment pages, the, the Perry Fellowship Bible is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm never sure if I'm ever saying that name right. Perry Bible Fellowship. That's the one. Uh, and there's another one, the uh, something explained with buff dudes. That's fucking great as well. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's our, our turd comics, which is absolutely great. There's that one strip where he does where he like holds up a picture and he says, I'm my own worst critic. And then this huge, massive blue dude comes up with internet on him. And he just like kicks straight through the picture, <laughs> gets him and he's crying. He goes, never forget this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, uh, yeah, humor, humor's right up there. I mean, that's an absolute Three. fucking yeah. gem. You've got, you've got stuff like, you know, Simon Hanselman's Crisis Zone making, mm. like, Comic of the Year on, like, loads of stuff. You know, there's, it was it was huge throughout 2020 as well. I mean, that's absurdist humor. Yeah. Um, Crash Sight and everything that we've that yeah. I've heard you guys speaking about as well. Yeah. Um, you know, loads of stuff. And like I say, like the the strips so going, going going as far back as like crazy cat and everything it's all yeah. it's all humor strips mm, um yeah. absurdist stuff for like Johnny i actually Ryan think comedy is easy easier to carry off in shorter strips but yeah. harder to maintain over a longer story yeah. i think especially if you've yeah. got a concept like yeah. how yeah. uh al henderson, henderson keeps it going with penguins fucking mm. yeah if, if you have a, a running narrative um your humor is coming from the characters it's the importance of the characters mm-hmm. um you know, it's not always it's not always jokes, is it? But sometimes just uh, the way a character acts. I mean, he, even humor's got many genres to it. You've yeah. got satire yeah. and you've got slapstick, and you know, there's all different parts. Yeah, to it, yeah. Isn't it? You know, I mean, I remember Monkey Branch into sort of like a Beano Dandy stuff into uh, reading Gru, which is just yeah, yeah, absolute uh, humor hilarity all the way through it. And then even then, like get the more underground stuff, like reading Freak Brothers around the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I didn't really get all the references, if I'm honest, but. Uh, there's certain times when it's sort of like uh, the, the drug effects taking effect on Fat Freddy. And yeah. You're fucking laughing. Uh, well, Crumb. Crumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Crumb, Crumb is a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of comedy in Crumb stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do we know a lot of small press creators that, that do humour? I'm trying to yeah. rack my brains to think. There is there is a number. John Tucker. John yeah. Tucker, um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd be. like to think I try it occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Comic Hercules. The, um... But do you know, like, as a saying, right, this is a humor comic, and going out with that in mind, not having a comic with humor in it. Humor in it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people think they do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think humor is a is a, is a wonderful gateway to a reader. Um, mm. If as soon yeah. as you get someone's sense of humor, um, and I, I I think immediately that that can immediately turn someone off as well like oh you know i don't find this kind of humor funny but if you yeah if you do latch on to the same sense of humor as the reader then they're going to be with you for the whole yeah. thing i actually yeah. think it's a riskier style to take these days than maybe horror because there is a big part of humor especially the humor that we like that goes out to offend and satirize yeah and i think not everyone either gets it or pretends they get it no yeah or don't get it uh, you know it's, it's i think it's, a, it's actually more of a dangerous area to sometimes acting in mind. acting in bad faith to yeah. sort of to, to yeah. see the wrong thing in something uh i agree man yeah you got you got to be careful i mean some people just seem to just like it just glances off them that kind of criticism or or those yeah. thoughts but i'd i'd almost constantly be thinking oh god is this Will this fly? Or uh, mm. I, don't know. I, I do like comedy that challenges me. Do you know what I mean? I like, I like the stuff that gets me it thinking. Do. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, fucking, I turned on the TV earlier and Citizen Calm was on, and I thought, right, let's watch a little bit, and just nothing. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's not funny. This is there wasn't jokes. I just mm. what like Mrs. Brown's at? Boys or something like that. Or Michael McIntyre. <laughs> it just, it just <clears throat> doesn't, doesn't work for me. I don't know. Yeah, you know. But then again, someone like Stuart Lee, who just isn't just making jokes, he's actually just being funny through his observations. I really like. Yeah. I suppose it's yeah, each their own. Of course, of course. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I'm sure there's plenty of folk that would read something like, I don't know, pa- Patrick Sparrow stuff, for example. Yeah. Peter Creeper offended. and would be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Oh, without yeah. doubt. Um, but it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely yeah, it's, hilarious. And that's brilliant. making that's making uh comments and everything just on its images within the background and everything. Like the actual maybe the the baseline for the strip or the story 
isn't making a, a sort of satirical look on something, but his little bits that he's added in the back about about the United States or something like that it yeah. makes it funny, you know. I wonder. I wonder if true humor <clears throat> is now um, an area that can only be addressed in indie because of the the concerns of the bigger companies of offense. You know, I mean, could 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 DC Comics put out a Joe Matt book about him just masturbating all the time? No. You know, no, no, that, you know, no. Where no, maybe but, in the seventies they might have had little imprints put that stuff out. You know, Vertigo maybe or something. You know, no, but um, they could they could do something like the Justice League International or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that is yeah. funny. I mean, I mean, but that one is, Star Squadron is like that. A, a humor book with a big two now is, is like that Deadpool style of humor where it's all self-referential. It's pop, yeah. cu- pop culture yeah. humor. It's yeah. it's very simple and obvious, and you and it's just sort of like. I think the word is unfunny. You're saying. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's the word. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was funny at one point, but that point it used passed. to be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. cool. What about we, we, we've taken ages on one there? What about you, V? Um, I think this is. Uh, I mean, I was looking at my list of three, and the three massively broad genres. Um, I'm gonna uh, say sci-fi is the first one. Okay. Yeah, for me. Um, but I think in order to say sci-fi, you have to sort of narrow it down because sci-fi can incorporate quite literally everything. Um, yeah, well, it's <laughs> pretty, Iron Man, isn't it? Or you know, much, even Superman yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. superheroes you could tuck into science fiction. You know, you've got. I mean, you could have horror with aliens and stuff like that. Um, if I was to stick to a sort of, um, I don't know, like it's just um, that sci-fi stuff that. Isn't necessarily hard sci-fi, I, I would say. Um, actually, there's a bit of everything in it because hard sci-fi is the. Is that the one that's? I always get the two mixed up. Which one is the more sort of Blade Runner style, and which one is the more Star Wars? Hard style? sci-fi is the more sort of. I always see it as the more pre-Star Wars when it was about the ideas and mm-hmm. you know, like Philip K. Okay. Dick or Heinlein or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. it became all big rocket ships and yeah, yeah and and fighting and <laughs> good music. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I think it's it's easier for me to be won over by um, a bigger sort of Star Warsian like sci fi um, because it's got its gloss and it's got its pomp and it's got its, it's got its blockbuster budget there there on show. It's so like adventure sci fi. Yeah, adventure sci fi. Because yeah. um, some of the some of the harder sci fi that sometimes modern day you know it just happens to have oh we've all got an implant in our brain which is which does this that and the other that's a harder sell normally there a lot of sci-fi stories in general not just in comics can be pretty slow i think they can be pretty plodding a lot lot of the time even if they've got like some overarching overall point well 2001 is pretty slow isn't it yeah you know it's still a beautiful spectacle just i think it kind of depends on who i'm in sometimes for sci-fi i mean the sci-fi was my fiction of choice for decades, definitely you know? yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah and i think you know obviously it, it speak I, I i like stuff more and more these days um that is the creation of worlds and, and bigger worlds. i don't need to be i don't need to know everything about this universe that's being built but to read to read something or to see something and it feels like there's a bigger universe out there you know the creator could have huge bibles about like the the law of like the ha- you know take take a dune t- star story you know i've got law about all these houses and stuff the reader shouldn't have to know all of that to enjoy the story but i like the idea of that there is a bigger story and there is a bigger world because then i think those worlds feel lived in yeah, yeah man that's my that's my juice i love that you yeah know what i mean yeah i just i like because with dune you can there's, there's a book called the dune encyclopedia that you can buy that runs yeah. alongside it and i kind of i kind of like that because a lot of science fiction books like a lot of fantasy as like such and such of how such and such from planet such and such and you're like oh fuck me I'm lost now you know yeah, it's the ability exactly. to look it up in the back of the book sometimes does me a favour yeah. 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 then you've got to look at Conan Conan would have a map so you can figure out where exactly he's meant to be in every book you know mm. yeah. yeah and I think um, but I, I think the sci-fi I, I'm sort of liking now is, is just the fun stuff uh, I'm just liking like big fun Sort of big adventure comics, you know, space blasters, oh, fair ships, enough. you know, like the, the space mullet type stuff. Yeah, you're, um, um, you're a you're a fan of black science, aren't you? Oh, uh, Vince. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that was that's one of the best weeks I've had in years. Really, <laughs> reading a book of that a day. Um, <laughs> it's good, isn't it? But that was that was a that was a deep mixture of like you know proper big sci-fi with almost um, outer limits style mm-hmm. um, moral moral storytelling going on. It was. Lots of it's kind of a lockdown things. project yours, wasn't it? Is that yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because I had the yeah. books for ages, I, I, and I would recommend this to people if if you've got like a if there's a series of books that you haven't got around to reading, just pick a book a day. You know, just t- take. a it was easier with Black Science because thankfully they weren't like Alan Moore. Maybe like five in. issues of trade or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and that, that was a great experience. I need to do that with a couple more series. I think. Look at my bookshelf. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I think I think that was a great example of um, what sci-fi can do. Mm-hmm. Um, a storytelling because you can tell these big epic. You know, we we are a kingdom and we're ruling the universe, or you can just tell a small story, you know, a family story. Mm-hmm. within a bigger universe i i think yeah science fiction is is definitely up there with me it's sort of overtaken superheroes i would say okay okay yeah. when, oh, I look at, when i look at when i look at like the books that i've bought yeah. um it's less and less superheroes that's why superheroes were nudged out of my top three mm, so pre- presented with a shelf of comics in like say in a comic shop yeah you're going to pick up sci-fi it's going to be one of your go-to's yes yes look i through. think i, I think yeah. i think i think so but that's with the caveat it kind of has to be a specific, you know, because like, sci-fi is so wide, isn't it? It, it? Yeah. It's a specific type of... If it's got yeah. my flavour, I'll pick that over a superhero. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. I think that's the best. Yeah, interesting. And that's changed. It's interesting that's changed, isn't it? Yes. The superhero is what everyone sees comics as from outside, yeah. you know, Joe and Joe and Bubba. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what I grew yeah, up yeah. on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, and yeah, I, yeah. I, still, I still love reading them now, but now it's sort of like my, my three genres are sort of different. And I have noticed some other genres sort of creep up as well, but we'll talk about them once we've done the main three, I think. So, okay, yeah. some worthy mentions. So, so, uh, so, so do you mind? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Uh, mine is edgy autobiographical or pseudo autobiographical. Now, oh, interesting. Uh, you may think autobio, so there's a lot of shit out there, isn't there? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I've I've had to trim it a little bit. So I, with the caveat that it's especially as long as it's come from 65, 1965 to ninety nine, I'm I'm okay with it. I think. Once web comics came in, we began to see an influx of people just being sad on their couches, and mm-hmm. that's not what I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, they have to be. Uh, what's the quote I read? I wrote this quote down. My name is an autobiography autobiog- isn't complete without some shame, and I think that pe- if people aren't mm-hmm. prepared to sort of reveal themselves properly mm-hmm. in a autobiographical book, then I'm not interested in it. it has so it, therefore it has to has have that edge, and I think. In doing that, the rev- that's why I'm drawn to it. The revelation of the person, which I'm really interested in, has a real, um, it, it's, it's really something I'll look at. And it also has real possibilities for the medium to be able to explore the inner self as well as, you know, the events that are going outside on some people. Um, I thought I'd just mention a few of them. Um, so, so just examples of where I'm going with this. So Peter Bag, um, Crumb, um, James, James Kolchaka. I know you're a fan of those people, Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, or a couple of them. Uh, Seth, obviously, we've talked about before. Um, there's a there's a book by Al Davidson called The Spiral Cage, which is um, about his illness growing up and stuff, and that is incredibly strong. Um, Harvey Picar is another one. Oh yeah, where would we be without Harvey? Um, Art Spiegelman. I mean, uh, Craig, it's been talked about a lot at the moment. Um, Eddie Campbell. Mm-hmm. I love Eddie Campbell's autobio stuff. I think it's incredible. Um, even um, Brian Bendis did some about him trying to break into comics and stuff like that. There's some really good stuff there. Um, Joe Sacco, uh, Chester Brown. Chester Brown's paying for it. Mm-hmm. I think Vince said to me he managed to clean the house while I talked about that on an episode about four years ago. <laughs> fucking, I just loved the fact that this person can put it out there. And I think that people go, oh, I'm doing autobio comic, but they either try and make themselves cool, sound cool, cool, or they just moan about how yeah. they don't feel, how they feel sad. You know, mm. I think have something, you know, <clears throat> the old story about you want to fight a bull. If you want to write about fighting a bull, fight a bull. I know it's not an exact yeah. science, but mm. you know, if you want to, if you want to make an autobiographical comic, have something to talk about, be interested. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Bob, um, Bob Fingerman's book, you know, that yep. the sort of the revelations of his, <clears throat> quote unquote sex life and relationships and friends and stuff he's really exposing himself there to people and mm. i think no, say what you will about crumb he did the same i may not always agree with perhaps the politics of it but he really was pushing the boundaries of what we could see julie Doucette maybe as mm. well and like joe matt who we just mentioned um and i i really think it's becoming a lost art because people see it, in what sense, if someone says to you at a comic convention, I'm doing an autobio comic, immediately my, my senses shut down. Fucking and I think, how quickly both. can I get out of this conversation? Yeah. <laughs> um, because I know it's not going to be that quality. It's not going to be Eddie Campbell. You know, 
Um, There's a sequence in fucking the poor bastard where like yeah, he's yeah. just he's just masturbating <laughs> all the time. <laughs> like and then he has a chance for a threesome with two girls and he just can't fucking do it. Yeah. And he, yeah. he goes into the bathroom and bangs one out. Yeah. <laughs> he just feels he feels absolutely worthless and it's like, oh fucking hell, man. <laughs> Terrible. I mean, have a look at some of Jim Walking's, <clears throat> you know, autobio stuff. Craig Thompson, you know, look at you know, blankets. Um I don't can't remember if I said Paul Salino, but Paul Salino is a perfect example of that. You know, yep. his life is exposed. And we talked about it, Tom. Uh, mm-hmm. Louis Trondheim um, and his wife, he did, he did a book with about her life. Um, uh, Marjane Satrapi as well. Um, Mary Felina. Seth. Yes. You know, these people, they just, they really did move the, the medium on yeah. by what they did. And I think we're really missing that, that, that chance taking and experimentation that we don't see enough of. Look I'll at um, Gareth Hopkins. He's another one. Yes, Gareth. definitely. Yeah, that's a good yeah. shout. Yeah. yeah. I banged the small press drum for uh, uh, Catriona Chapman with uh, Fung. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Again, if yeah. you want to read a book about where something happens, that fuck me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, follow me. And he's, he's a, you know, she, look what she did in her life there. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. even without the, the, the personal story going along, I would just read someone what, what she got up to because yeah. it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you have, so, to, you have to have something to say and you have to do it in a way that is interesting and um, inspiring almost, you know, yeah. to, to how they do it. And I, I don't think we see enough of it. We see it every so often. But the, yeah. you look at 65 onwards, there were the, the examples of some of the books that were coming out about people's lives who were just incredible. Yeah, so I, that's... Uh, I think it sounds a bit cruel if you sort of say, well, I'm not really interested in listening about your life. But I guess, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, there, there's so many people that, that, that live lives that my life wouldn't be interesting to fucking yeah. most of the planet. Do you know the best I mean? example but, of that is there's that quote, wasn't it? Write a dream, lose a reader. So if someone comes to you and says, Oh, I had this really weird dream. I'm going to tell you about it. You're like, fucking hell. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's the same with auto by, Oh, I had this really terrible. I got a bus today and now I couldn't get on the bus. Nobody's interested, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's funny. You, you've said all that though. Um, Tony, I, I mean, skipping ahead a wee bit slightly here. Yeah. I mean, I put my number one as slice of life, and you've okay. named you've named near enough everybody that was on that list. <laughs> I know we talk about it a lot, don't we, Tom? We do talk yeah. about we what we saw comics and chat yeah. about who's who's doing stuff. Yeah, and I know a lot of that stuff was up your street actually. So yeah, yeah. I expected it. Okay. There, was, there were some other ones like uh, Jeffrey Brown. Um, yes, um, when he was a- doing good comics. <laughs> yeah, um, AJ Dungo. Within waves. Oh yeah, bloody so, hell! Yeah, yeah. Fuck me, um, yeah, yeah. Adrian Tamina, as well. Yes, yep. Uh, Derf. Um, yeah, that's God. Good one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. But a yeah. uh, one that's well, two that have stuck out for me recently is uh, Leslie Stein. Um, she did her whole book about her um, abortion. I know you write her. That was just okay. oh, just absolutely killer. Um, a very sort of painterly. Um, watercolor stuff it's is incredible but she does she does a lot of stuff that's she's doing like a, a fictionalized story just now online um but it's it's almost an autobio because she's played in bands and stuff and it's about her time on the road but she put it through like a, a fictional lens you know what i mean yeah um but it's still it's still ostensibly an autobio comic and ms hartness yeah i love that um, stuff we talked oh, about a couple oh, weeks ago yeah holy yeah, yeah. crap like i, I read um Tinderella and um, <laughs> Des- Desperate Pleasures and holy shit like I, I've it's still that see by the end of the year if I'm still thinking the way I'm thinking that's like that's it she's 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 won the whole 2022 in my opinion right cool um just she's the one stuff. guys you remember I did the story I talked about the story where she 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 went out with a bloke with a foreskin and to escape a bank robbery she blew it up and they floated away in uh, Rust Belt review. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just so brutally honest with some of the stuff, though. I mean, there was great line um, as well, a nice use of blacks and yeah, yeah, abs- yeah, yeah absolutely really lovely. Nice. But there was, you know, there was a story I was reading that was a part where she was just, there was a bit where she was like bored in the house, and you know, most people would do the bored in the house, and it's it's um, pictures of them sitting in front of the telly or something like that. The picture, the picture that it cut to was her on her phone, but with like a lubed up vibrator beside her, um, and all these like all the shit lying about her and everything like there was no cleanliness to it in any way shape or form it was so honest like she'd she'd done every sort of grimy horrible detail about the room um and then it just went into some other thing about her um 
exercising with some dude that she's banging and stuff like that. It's like fucking hell. Like I've, I've not seen I've not seen honesty like this in a long, long yeah. time. Um, there's also a uh, Carl crumples is he does like a, right. a diary comic but it literally just bangs one out every day and he's been doing it for about the past like Dan does that three to five years <laughs> 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 no, like the past like three to five years or something like that um well okay every single Coach, day Coach Chuck was like that wasn't he yeah he was yeah. yeah it's just the same it's the same kind of discipline behind it it's unbelievable um and Noah Noah had um, yeah, of course. Noah yeah, Vanskever yeah. had one dirty tree, but he also does those little strips. He's got a, a one yep. that's coming out later this year. I think it's something like as a cartoonist or something like that. I take it back. There is stuff currently. It's just there's a lot of stuff that ain't any good. I think no, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I get that. There's there there is a lot of people who have just jumped on that. Um, they've seen one person that they've liked, but unfortunately, that person is kind of who you're speaking about, um, and they've just taken influence from that so i'll take influence from so and so and so and so and next minute you've just got a bunch of imitations that are just yeah. as bland and as yeah. boring um they don't go any deeper than that one instagram comic they've seen yeah. you know i mean i think i don't i don't think you want me to mention who quote who, who, you coined this phrase to me the other day but the the self-help aisle of autobiographical <sighs> comics seems to be like a really busy aisle at the moment yeah definitely. And there's nothing that bores me more no. You know, we've all got our demons, man. We've just been, been through this shit. I don't need you to tell me about yours. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to just look to the shelf then, uh, Kingdom by John McNaught. I know that's not strictly within well, it's kind it, of, but, Is it about yeah. his childhood? I'm not sure. It might be, yeah. yeah I think it's yeah. like, it is part of his childhood, but not actually yeah. about him. Do you know what I mean? See, uh, this yeah. is what this is why I went with Slice of Life as opposed to Autobio. Yeah. So yeah. I, I sort of yeah. lumped Diary Comics and Autobio in there because... And in a sense, Love and Rockets isn't really autobio, but the guys have lived through those kind of families and days and stuff mm. and just written yeah. stories about them, you know, all the punks and everything and growing up with large Hispanic families in those kind of areas yeah. and all the stories and stuff that they've heard. So in a way, they technically classes it, but it's not ostensibly autobio. I think, I think when you know it's someone genuinely telling you a story and it's interesting i think that can have a profound effect on you Agreed. i read that yeah. i read that onwards towards our noble deaths by shigeru mizuki this week and again and it's um it's about him in the world war one where he he lost all of his friends he was the last surviving person in his tree you know in his in the japanese army on this island mm-hmm. and he lost his army got malaria and when you think fuck me this dude's been through it man yeah you no know, and this becomes like almost more interesting than it had just been sort of a, a character who i know was made up you know mm, can be yeah. just used and thrown about as per the narrative structure required. Um, there's something different to it, isn't it? Yeah, know? definitely. That, that whole thing of kind of when, when you know there's a real person behind this or a lot of it's yeah. based on reality, it, it fucking makes it so much heavier, weightier, should I say. Yeah. I was trying to work out the other day what constitutes based on a true story because does there have to be a percentage of... I don't think there has, man. And when you're talking about Bob Fingerman, it's kind of ostensibly... Not, it is him, but he calls him someone else. Okay. And I think... I don't mind that. I think we use we can use facades and you know um, parallels and metaphors and stuff. I mean, there's no secret in the fact that Atomic Hercules is basically based on how I hate everyone. You know, <laughs> so there's a little bit of me. In there. Yeah, um, but it de- depends on degrees, I suppose, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? That that whole um, what is real? You know, when you write an autobiography, what are you actually? showing are you showing emotion are you showing events are you, are you showing you know kind of an event that relates to an emotion that didn't have, you know there's all sorts of different ways to do it and i think that's kind of why it makes it so interesting yeah i've got to say i could never do it i couldn't do it uh it's, a it's comic. too dark on you no dark. no I, just, I, I don't know how you could kind of like how would you ever kind of like uh express yourself through that medium or any medium i don't know how you could accurately give someone a picture of do you think you have to? Do you think there's an eager maniacal edge to it, Dan? Do you think there's sort of is it either this combination of putting yourself out there? But why? Why would I think I'm so interested? Exactly. Like, you yeah. know, it's almost, yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Like, why, why would you want to talk to someone who's fucking climbed Everest as opposed to? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. think sometimes people just want to put those stories out there to show people that they're not as boring as they think. I've yeah. seen I've seen people have okay. say that about their work that they're like. Well, I'm going to put my story out there so that people know that they've got more interest in lives than I do. And then they put it out there and it's like, mate, you've got an interest in life. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I think, does I know how, like when Crumb started putting out 
um, stuff that was ostensibly just about him. Okay, there's a massive ego there, but was that not his sort of mantra? Was it like, oh, my life's dead boring? I just uh, this is the only thing I can draw or something like that. Um, maybe. maybe. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. Your vigor, your vigor for life appalls me, or whatever that name of his. Mm-hmm. Is. You know, I love that title. Yeah, yeah. Da, uh, da, Dan, do you reckon you probably couldn't do it as well because it would be a, uh, it would be hard being that brutally honest about stuff. Yeah, you do have to reach in inside a bit, don't you? I suppose. Essentially, yeah. I don't think I'd like to kind of uh, reveal your life to others. T- yeah, and like just kind of anyone taking a look on, in on your life and the way. Yeah. You- you think and feel and act, being honest enough and to and judge you. represent that unfairly mm-hmm. i think sometimes you know yeah uh, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, or take it the wrong way even sometimes with some people you know potentially yeah i mean i can imagine just fumbling over the words you were trying to use to accurately describe what you're about uh, yeah uh, wouldn't everyone have trouble well, yeah we, we don't no one truly knows themselves do they no yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a definite bravery to to some of these sort of autobiographical comics and stuff to some of them yeah i think yeah. some yeah. of them is yeah. just not, not, fucking yeah. shameless self-promotion yeah. but yeah, I yeah. Think some bits certainly yeah, yeah some of it's like you know because like i say when you've got to be that brutally honest or or sort of choose to open your heart to people you don't know do you know what i mean yeah. you just it, i think it's, i think it's, it, it's an ex- artistic it's, expression to exactly tackling the art form that's what it is yeah, yeah. yeah. approaching um, it and tackling it as an art form. <laughs> what, I, well. I mean it's a it's, a, it's it becomes an interesting thing when you choose to then sell that art, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Expression. Yeah. Because, yeah, for instance, there are lots of people that have, you know, um, mental health issues and stuff, and they do they find their own ways of coping, whether it's you know, physical activity or, or you know, painting or whatever, whatever your vice is, mm-hmm. and, and just and it, and it just helps them, you know, with their well being, mm-hmm. and that's brilliant. But then. To d- if you're you asking did- people to put their hands in their pockets and pay for it then it becomes yes. a different then, thing yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. then yeah. then your <clears throat> in some ways your life becomes part of a product yeah yes, it, exactly it, it, that's a cold way of yeah. saying it but it is, i agree yeah yeah, it, it yeah you know for a fact eddie campbell will have people saying to him i like backers but it's not as good as when you did your autobio can you yeah, go back to yeah. that and yeah. it's almost like they're talking about you're talking about me now mate you're talking about yeah. my life you know? yes yeah. and it is one of those yeah. i've read this so i know you now no that's not that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that was basically how Harvey P. Carr's life ended up once he put it out. Yeah, and he started going on um, the late night chat shows and stuff, didn't he? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. He just ended up like everybody thought they knew who Harvey was purely mm. based on these pages, and it's like you don't really know him. Like you know this strip, you know this section of what happened in his life, but what's accounting for the rest of the twenty-three hour period? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's. Yeah. That's interesting, man. You put that, and in a different medium, yeah. isn't this in a way autobiographical? What we're doing now, mm-hmm. we're talking about what we read, what we like, yeah, yeah, our, our past oh, yeah, experiences. Yeah. There, there, there's yeah. a certain, there's a certain element of that, yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, mm-hmm. there's a certain, um, in some ways, a performance art to it. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> because if you want to follow me around all day, you'd be fucking really bored. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's certain things you can't. You wouldn't you want to express uh, that you want other people to hear and yeah, yeah. not just yeah. for that bad I, faith I, thing. I, I'm talking yeah. to you, lovely people out there. I want you to discover these comics and like learn with me about making comics and stuff like that. But don't be offended if I don't invite you around my house for tea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never even been in his house. <laughs> I, I well, I've lived there that long. Time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you made me sit in the garden. Well, it's where you belong. Um, <laughs> and, anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> See, we can have a whole show about this particular topic, and I think I think we should have a, have a discussion. Yeah. About it. But we got we still need another two genres oh, to go. Yeah, still, let's go. <laughs> okay, so we're actually doing, not doing too badly because Tom's done three and one. I've just and the rest of us have done three. So, mm. Tom, what's your number two? It is mystery and slash crime. Oh, okay. Uh, excellent. Um, um, another one that falls in sort of a, a wide umbrella as well, though, because I mean. It, you can have a mystery story that's also a sci-fi story or yeah, Batman, uh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah exactly that's yeah that's exactly what i had there with the uh, superheroes as well because i mean you've got justice league stories out there that are ostensibly a who done it and all this kind of stuff you've got um indie books um th- like some true crime stuff like say katie skelly's maids for example Okay. Um, that's you know that's a true crime thing about those two sisters mm. that murdered that um, 
that a uh, woman and her and her daughter and and it's in i can't remember what the what year it was like the 1800s or something like that but you've got things like black sad you've got things like uh on a small press um stage you've got charles raymond's death inc is mm-hmm. a mystery story a crime story uh you've got ed brubaker out there building a whole um it's, back on crime he's almost, it's almost his own yeah. genre yeah exactly yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and the mystery and crime genre is the foundation upon which most comics are are standing on these days because it was yeah. the, it was the the biggest yeah know, it was the pulps it was, it was the pulps. yeah i think it there was, was the two strands wasn't there it was the comedy sundays they put together yeah. in the comic and then there was the pulps and those two things became comics in america didn't yeah. They? yeah 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 so yeah but, and but there I is the, the people's fascination with crime and as like you say true crime and like yeah you know people yeah. love it don't they yeah people people love to be um sort of titillated and tantalized to follow a, a string and and try and find the end and find this conclusion you know you, you tease in these little bits by each strip or each page until it reaches that grand a, conclusion it's high art, isn't it it's, there's a yeah. real strong mm. you got to know what you're doing haven't you it's something that i think um in in particular it's something that i think dan klaus does quite a lot in a lot of his books um okay. even with david boring it might be it might be a bit all over the place and a bit really surreal, but there is a kind of a mystery crime element to it. I mean, somebody gets shot and you're trying to find out who yeah, it is true. and who yeah. did it and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of a, a who done it to things. Um, even think of Watchmen. Yeah, Watchmen's just a who done it, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, it is one of the oldest genres within literature and 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 everything. But you know, it, it is something I find myself going after more and more. I want to. I want to have a mystery behind the book. I, I want to. I want to have something that I kind of yeah. have to keep thinking about, and 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 you know, come into your own conclusions as you're going along with it. Given it the, oh, I think it's so and so, or whatever. Yeah. This is going to happen, and then you know, the, the, there may be a twist, there may not. You may be right. You know, oh, oh yes, I find, you know, I, I figured that out. Um, I almost think we need to return to that with comics. I think, like, firstly, the Who Done It, Long Halloween, for example, mm-hmm. is great. Who Done It, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the, I also think that. Um, we need to return to crime. So I'm tired of everything being some <laughs> cos- it, cosmic event. Of the week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, but I think we, I'm tired of everything being a fucking cosmic event or the joining of two fucking realities or something like that. What's the old phrase? Is it? I can't remember who said it now. Something like Sal Buscema said. Can we just fucking get the villains to rob banks again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Not, not everything has to be on a grand cosmic yeah. scale. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, wouldn't it yeah. be brilliant if some of these these big big companies just sort of said. All of the cosmic and interplanetary and all these villains, just the event is they disappear, and everyone's just got to deal with the 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 homegrown evil yeah. that's on the planet. Yeah. They just managed to do that with sales, so that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's like when you go, we've got like a we got an interstellar uh, like end of reality event. I was like, what's the next story? An interstellar end of reality. <laughs> yeah, event. yeah, yeah. So oh, okay, yeah, I could kind of only so many times you're like, oh, I'm fucking numb to this now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, yeah, event no after way. event after event after, you know, it's just, yeah, I've had enough. Yeah, I just want to see, I just want to know about Captain America and what he does in the day and who he fights, mm-hmm. you know. And, I, you know, I don't I don't need him to be travelling to fucking the realm of death every four I mean, like, fucking issues, you know. Reading when those characters kind of like went out of their, their comfort zone, that was like a novelty. I used to really like that. But when they're constantly fucking doing it and it's like, yeah, when, when are we did... Spider-Man in space again? You're like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. When did helping normal people Exactly. Become yeah. below something that a superhero does. Stopping a mugging. Stopping <laughs> yeah. a mugging. Come on, yeah. Spider Man, stop a mugging yeah. without it being like a, a trick to get him in an alleyway to transport him to fucking Valhalla or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crime. Yeah. Let's do it. No, um... <laughs> but no, it's, it is. It's, it's uh, you know, it's what Marvel and DC kind of built their backs on as well. Like, mm, think yeah. of DC's detective comics, for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, the. the Kirby was doing uh, crime stories and romance stories well before he was doing Captain America or mm. or any of them, you know. And it's it's just it, it is is it is a staple. EC point. comics, man. I mean, yeah, EC, yeah, they're the old. Yeah. They've, they've got the they've got the massive collections that you can get now as well um, so of just like yeah. cr- cr- EC crime, and it's like oh yeah. my god, it's just amazing. It was last year, but getting into uh, Southern Bastards. This fucking yeah, cloud way for that scout yeah. as well. Scout is amazing. Yeah, I love yeah. it so hard. Yeah, like yeah. black black sad as well. Like oh, that is yeah. just 
that's just hard boiled noir <laughs> crime fiction. It's, I, it's I said it. I said it so quickly and tried to breeze past it because I could spend about fucking three hours on Black Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. But it's um, I don't know if it's the thing as well that you just you go after a lot of these things as you start to get older as well. I don't know if you just want to find something that's maybe not as. It's, they're not really heavy stories, are they? Like mystery and crime stories aren't exactly like no. bogged down stuff. Yeah, when... especially in the noir stuff, which is like playing on. You know, there's a lot of personality work in them as well. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they're not. But they are. There is an element of threat to them as well. At the same point, so maybe something that you wouldn't have drifted to when you were younger. But as you get a wee bit older, you want something to kind of get lost in, but not be yeah. so bogged down with. And that sort of crime seems to be a sort of solid one. I mean, it's. What sells most in um, crappy paperbacks and in Tesco's and everything, isn't it? You know, yeah. Lee, yeah. Lee, Lee Childs has made a, a massive killing on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, th- I think uh, an important thing about crime stories, as well, is they are um, self-contained. Even if yeah. it's, if it's yeah. a character um, running through it, it's still an arc. It's mm-hmm. still it's still the, the crime is just one and done because you can't just have two hundred issues of just someone being. <laughs> Just Remember the old Vertigo crime, crime yeah. series, which were like little, almost like novel size, mm. smaller sort mm-hmm. of manga size. They were great. They were like one done, some really good stories, like noiry yeah. stories. I kind of like yeah. that. Though. Yeah, I yeah. do like the kind of like the, the crime stories, which are not so much like, oh, here's a load of gangsters doing a, a robbery. You know what I mean, more the kind of you take an ordinary person and then they're, they're pushed to an extraordinary limit, and then they they get into crime or do something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, like a Breaking Bad style story where. It's just an average Joe, relatively speaking, and they have to, they get caught up in it. And before you know it, there's there's fucking crime going down. I think for a good crime comic as well. I mean, I read a lot of crime novels, so all the hard case crime books I tore through in a couple of years. But the, I think what you have to remember is, if you're doing a crime comic, is it it's a comic, it's a visual medium, yeah. so it has to have action in it. I think just talking heads in a comic, you know, planning a bank robbery for two issues don't work. You've no. got to have something else in it that's mm-hmm. visually interesting. What was that comic you reviewed recently, Tony, where people were getting punched off panel? They were getting shot off panel. Shot off yeah, panel, twice. that's the most bizarre the, thing. The two big watershed moments in the comic are when two people get shot and he he, he did it off panel. And I still, for the life of me, can't imagine why. <laughs> I, you know? I, I find that and it was about a bank robbery. So, yeah, strange, isn't it? You've got, you've got, it's a comic, it's a visual medium. We've got to be able to show it, haven't we? You know, it's all right drawing I mean, cool pictures of people in hats, but you also have to show stuff that is visually interesting. You know? Even if you showed stuff in silhouette or showed it artistically, you don't have to show like blood and brains going flying everywhere. Yeah. But you need to kind of like, you have to show the act in some way. Yeah. You visually to, represent it because it's a comic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Show, show don't tell, as they say. Yeah. Would you um just just thinking there though? Would you class something like um Derf's my friend Dahmer in his mystery crime or not? It's certainly crime, isn't it? In yeah. a way, yeah, yeah. I'd say it goes more into kind of the slice of life because and it's more. F- it focuses more on him as a person as opposed to him his crimes, as it yeah. were. Psychological yeah. study, or you know, it's hard to make <clears> a genre up for it, isn't it? It's sort of. It's just because I mean he does. You know, he, he he does kill things throughout the book, and there is yeah. he, he, there is the sort of sequence where he does get picked up when he has the bags with the body in, mm. in, in the back or whatever. Which, but there's no there's no actual there's you don't see anything, and that's just that is just one element to a larger story. So I yeah. guess it, it wouldn't, but it's just it, it is something that does kind of get lumped in. I have seen it in crime sections before yeah, that's yeah. why i, I wonder so. but, like true crime yeah. sections obviously um yeah but, yeah it, it does get lumped in true true um, crime is another sort of growing place isn't it which is gotcha. sort of this being slightly oversaturated i think due to the sort of netflix effect isn't it mm-hmm. um, oh his podcast did that first oh it's true yeah yeah, yeah. 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 big time now yeah. i do find some of that a little ghoulish the and I've I've fucking partaken in the, the goolery it out for hours as well. <laughs> it seems to sort of spread out, you know, one murder for like nine hours yeah, of documentary. Yeah. Like, fucking hell. It's all like yeah. pour over details and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm loving this. And then it's like, <laughs> you think about it, and like, oh, there's actually people here that died. And yeah, yeah. We started watching that one on the uh, the Washington <clears throat> Sniper, and that's like, fucking hell, this is grueling. I was like, I don't know if right. I can keep watching this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Red Ring. Yeah. See, I've not I've not read that. Yeah. That's a crime comic. That yeah. is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It really I put it is. on my list to get. 
I'll be talking about a comic later that makes Red Room look like um, Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. got that to look forward to listener yeah <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, next up vince oh no, it's dan isn't it Nick? Dan, really. yeah. which one's this my number two yeah. yes it's weird because uh, th- this is a really tough one for me and i, I can't i'm not sure we can really just de- define the the genre but it's it's the high concept comic that when okay y- when you hear the 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 and this can be multi-genre, so it's a very difficult one. It's not even really a genre itself, but like when someone explains a story to you, and the, one of the best examples it could be is like that Dark Ark comic. Yeah. Oh yeah! And you told me the concept of that, Vince. I was like, "Fuck yes, I'm yeah. fucking in for that." <laughs> yeah, Noah's got. There's Noah's got. Not, yeah, gone. the high concept pictures. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you, as soon as you hear it, it's like Dark Ark was one of them. Uh, last week I talked about Stray Dogs. It's a serial killer book from the perspective of the dogs. And I was yeah. like, what? Let's, oh. let's go. <laughs> you know. Let's just love it. There's another one. What was I fucking thinking of? And I was like, as soon as I heard the content. Well, well, Ultra Mega. See, I'm not, you could class yeah. it as kind of science, science fiction kaiju, but yeah. just yeah. all over that. Murder Falcon <clears throat> as just uh, Luther Strode. All, oh, man. It, there's so many. But again, it's, a nice, it's not really. nice, solid, a- strong, like inspiring and easy to explain concept. Yes. You know, where someone says it's this, and you go, fuck me, that's interesting. That's really interesting. You know, yeah. What, what are you going to explore with that idea? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the, the the other one we did re- read recently? It was the, uh, not Final Halloween. Well, Final Halloween, that would, in, that would encompass that. But the one where the, they, all the people were suicidal and they go to oh, the... Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's all die. Concept. Yeah, that's yeah. all die. Yeah. That's just like, what a great idea. Yeah. And you want to see how it plays out. Yeah. But again, that's horror. But uh, the concept falls under that. But... Yeah, yeah, those, <laughs> those concepts that just immediately grab you. That sort of like, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a book about you know uh, a boy meets girl and falls in love. Oh yeah, whatever. And then you say the other line, and people go, "Pardon what?" Yeah, I am. But isn't that. isn't that isn't that what a good story should be? And unfortunately, these days is allowed to run away with it. So you know, millionaire has heart defects, so buys armor and fights crime in it. But then yeah. again, you get, oh, no, he's lost his money. Now he's a fucking hologram, you know. Or, yeah. you know, man gets bitten by a spider and he, be, you know, gets the powers of spider. Oh, no, but there's actually 43 of them. They all come from different dimensions. And now he's a millionaire and his girlfriend yeah. has died. And you think, oh, it's just run away with you. Go back to the basic concept yeah. of what you've got, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That goes back to that street crime thing. I want Spidey fighting criminals in the street. Yeah. Not- yeah. yeah. We yeah. just want a simple life. <laughs> <laughs> but i guess you could get like like the walking dead i guess that started with that yeah. kind of concept like Crossed. what happens yeah what happens at the end of a zombie film yeah when... because the walking dead's like one of the massive successes whether you like it or not is like it it did it it did something that a lot of people wanted just an ongoing data you know living in a in a world full of zombies mm-hmm. how, how would you survive <clears throat> you know because that... romero presents those like three films like a snapshot of this timeline yeah. of Here's it kicking off. Here's it in full swing, and here's when it's basically yeah. humanity's over. Yeah. And people wanted that more of it. Yeah, uh, and, because I think and, people that well, also tapped into people going, "Oh well, I know what I'd do. I would, yeah. I would do this, that, and the other." Yeah. But, if, but when you when you sort of show them an ongoing day to day, this is you how wouldn't. you have survived. Yeah. Maybe well, we one of my favorite favorite one of my favorite high concepts is Girls by the Luna Brothers. Loads of alien naked girls try to. Yeah. Sex <laughs> That's a high concept it's for me. A, it's a po- yeah, it's a, yeah, Forty-eight it's a days a of night. That's uh, 30, thirty days. Thirty days. Thirty days. <laughs> 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 days. That's my sequel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extended editor's cut. It's yeah. like a fucking yeah, month yeah. and a half. We'll all be dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't no, last no, another I, day. The director's extended yeah. it. I think I think that one, Dan, is the perfect example of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It is that here's a town yeah. where for one month, uh, for for thirty days, it just goes completely dark and there's no sunlight. Oh yeah, and then vampires come to town. Yeah. What? And then uh, the, you've immediate and that was I think it was one of the reasons it was so huge. It was it was just it just tapped into something original. I think we we also have to avoid the cliche with that. So that you know, they're, they're all the ones we've talked about there, are, <coughs> pardon me, are great. But the you know, it's like a werewolf and a vampire live together. Boring. Yeah, Move yeah. on. You know, it's like that, isn't it? You know. Yeah. 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 But that's that's a plot hole for any genre, isn't it? As soon as you step into a yeah. genre story, you can fall it. You know, you got to avoid the the landmines of cliches wherever you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of things that people now think they've written a high concept. I've got to tell you, they probably ain't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's one of those kind of things, kind of like if you tell someone that idea, they think, oh, yeah, I'd love to explore that myself. What a great idea. But you've got it first, you bastard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Every story's been written, isn't there? It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but the, the art to that, though, Dan, is to steal it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then just fucking run with it. <laughs> it's not a zombie living with a ghost. It's a ghost living with a zombie. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh I came up with that idea God. until you did that. <laughs> I have I have had conversations with people at conventions where they I say what are you working on they say I'm doing this comic about this and this and this and I went oh like that novel by Heinlein and they'll go what uh, yeah <laughs> and they think fuck I thought it was yeah. original you know because nothing is really is nothing's it? original yeah. no. no it's just every story's in the telling isn't it mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's true man yeah yeah good V number two uh, my second one is the fantasy genre. Uh, okay. we've, we obviously talked about is it the uh, fantasy where me and you and Dan are living oh, together. Yeah, yeah, is that the yeah, fantasy? Yeah, like yeah. Rainbow. We're sharing a bed. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm. Which one Jesus. am I? You're Zippy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm fucking. Oh, I think zippy. I'm Zippy actually. Because be Zippy's the one that doesn't want to be there. <laughs> I'd imagine uh, Tony's got to be George. Surely. <laughs> yeah. What the big bear? I'm yeah. a big bear. No, no, yeah. you, no, no. You're you're the hippo, Tony. Dan, you're 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 no, definitely Zippy. Bungle. Zippy's a hippo, isn't he? Oh, no. Zippy's the orange one, isn't he? Zippy. How am I not Zippy? How am I not Zippy? Shut up. How am I because, not... <laughs> no, because, because we passed it now. That's the way it is. Uh, what's the pink one called? Fantasy comic. What's the pink one called? That's George. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Who's Bungle? Nobody wants to be George. Do Bungle. They? Dan's Bungle. Uh, Bungle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> that's fine now we've got that sorted now yeah, we've got cute. that important yeah. That's yeah. Um, obviously the fantasy genre we've covered it um, quite a lot recently obviously we had an episode not too long ago about barbarians mm. yeah. um, but just fantasy is my jam man uh, um, mm. out, out of the two I like fantasy and genre sort of uh, fantasy and sci-fi sort of go hand in hand um, you've either got your you know the Jumanji and was it Zathura Exactly, yeah. exactly the same yeah. story. But I the thought writer, they were the same thing. But the, mm. but the writer wrote Zathura f- for the people that like sci-fi over Jungle Stories. It's, uh. It is, it is exactly <laughs> the same thing. He just flavoured it for a different audience. Um, but it didn't have Robin Williams in it. Uh, it did find replace <laughs> Jumanji with Zathura. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. a crossover event. Great, yeah. yeah, so in the multiverse. Monster, <laughs> monsters, magic, sword, sorcery. I, I just love it all. Um, and it's just, you know, with, I think there's there's been a real renaissance of it in, in sort of indie publishing. That's down to the renaissance of Dungeons & Dragons. I yeah, guarantee yeah, that's yeah. the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and but even without this subgenre, isn't it? Like we talked about sword oh, and yeah, sorcery, totally. but, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you have like um, the fantasy, you know, people will take a Conan book, but then mix it with a crime book. You know, mm. they'll, they'll, they'll do all kinds of things. Um, some some of them are just fantasy romance. Just happens to be in a fantasy world. Yeah. Um, me, I like the ones that just got huge fucking monsters. <laughs> people, people, people doing what? Doing what to monsters? D- yeah, <laughs> huge fucking monsters. <laughs> <laughs> and I would read that. Yeah, yeah. We need more bulbarians. That's all we need. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge genre of webcomics, like fantasy. It's, yeah, I, yeah, I'd argue that's one of the biggest ones because so many people make up their own fantastical worlds mm-hmm. and away they go. And it is like you, um, you very much you just create the limits are endless, isn't it? You create your world, you create your, your own gravity for want of a better word, and then you, then you can just play with it. I mean, what's the um, is it Hundred Fists, Dan? What's the one you like? That's a fantasy. oh yeah, something ground play. Oh god, another one. Yeah, yeah, is it Hundred Ground. Smashing blows or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's, it, so, yeah. there's so many different genres um, of fantasy that you know, rising take, sand was take, that be it? Yeah, I mean that's that's a fair bit of sci-fi as well. But, yeah. The problem yeah. with it is as well is it's another one that it can easily fall into cliche, can't it? Yeah, completely, yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. Completely. Yeah, and, it, and, and some of them play on that though, don't they? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Like 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 barbaric. Absolutely love it. It knows the cliches, leans into <laughs> it, and just goes for, and puts the foot down rather than going oh no i'm i'm not influenced by conan that's the sort of book that like, says yeah i fucking love conan what of it and just fucking go <laughs> yeah it. just own it yeah yeah exactly well, hawk the slayer to. does the same i exactly. was reading hawk the slayer today yeah. it does exactly the same doesn't it yeah 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 so you know fancy cute genre it's a simple one so that's mine that was my you need to get one. that hawk the slayer v 
Is you it like good? it? Yeah, it's good, is it? Did you like the movie? I know it was a bit of shit. Oh, Did so you like long it ago, and I watched it. I, I have no memory of it. I know lots of people right. have. I know it's got like its own legion of fans, isn't it? But I can't, yeah, it's on yeah. Blu-ray. You get on Blu-ray now. Yeah. yeah, I uh, watched that. Recently, yeah, I've watched it a couple of times recently since I got the DVD. Okay. Why, why did you watch it a couple of times recently? Just kind of like disbelief. Disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> burn, burn That's a Breslau. the best yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's did a strange reason it? to watch it. I don't believe yeah. I'm watching it. You know, you just yeah. watch it and it's sort of like, it does have a fever dream. Or a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but it's yeah. fun. But the bit that gets me is that you know there's the the witch the the kind of the magic user of the group and obviously like someone's just gone down the joke shop with like 20 quid to sort of get the special <laughs> effects because it might be where, like a, the bloke opens the door and just gets blasted in the face with silly string yeah <laughs> <laughs> although i do think somebody watched that and thought we can make an even worse version of that than when it made crawl oh come yeah. on tony <laughs> <laughs> like Kroll, that weapon's amazing. Yeah, but when you watch that's Kroll, the only thing I remember about. Yeah, it. yeah, the weapon's yeah. amazing. When you watch Kroll, well, actually, another amazing thing is Liam Neeson's death scene. Spoilers: <laughs> Liam Neeson's in it. Um, but but the weapon's amazing. He doesn't really use it much, does he? No, not at all. Uh, okay, and then yeah. somebody saw Kroll and thought, well, how can we make an even more boring version of Kroll? And they made Willow. Oh, yes. hey, oh, come, come on, on Tony. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell, what, man. <coughs> what separates his, yeah. his one? What separates Willow from Crow and uh Hawk the Slayer? Don't know. In Hawk the Slayer, you know Baldin, the dwarf character, he was supposed to be played by a small person. In Crow, the magician was supposed to be played by a small person. And because they had troubles with the casting, they just had to rewrite it and have like I'm trying to be careful right. my language here. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. Willow did have small people in it. So there okay. Go. There you well, go, the fans. Of, if you read the history of the Wizard of Oz movie, which has small people in it, they were yeah. up to all sorts in that movie, in, in behind the scenes. It's quite mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Read that, is, yeah. There's that that's big fa- thing that's about fantasy film. That's fantasy as well. So that's, that's yeah. well, well done. You brought it around, Tony. Also, <laughs> the, first, the first ever crossover <laughs> between Marvel and DC was the Wizard of Oz comic. Was it? Yeah. They jointly published it, yeah. What's that right of the Wizard of Oz? Like, young girl goes to Magic Land, kills the first person she sees, takes her shoes, and goes <laughs> off to, to kill her sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kill the first her person she sees. <laughs> I'd be oh. um, I'd be remiss if with men- when mentioning fantasy, I didn't mention Bone, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. I, I just, just had to just had to slip that in because fuck, Bone is just incredible, yeah. uh, utterly incredible, and it it gets forgotten as as being a fantasy thing because you just get lost up in yeah. Somebody will go, oh characters. yeah, but that's that's uh, more sort of all ages. Like, well, that's yeah. not a genre, either. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like you can have tons <laughs> yeah. of all ages fantasy books. That, uh, there's nothing wrong with yeah. It's and a, the other one, the other one is Hilda. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, yes. yeah, Gorgeous. Completely. yeah, completely. Um, okay, Tony, what's yours? Uh, my my what is this two isn't it so my yeah. second one is martial arts comics yeah uh, yes. so leaping it may surprise people that it's not erotic comics <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a given worthy mentions yeah the um it jumps out of my love that was happening all at the same time of loving master of kung fu and just thinking this is brilliant and also watching at the local cinema near me in wembley some of the shittest kung fu films that came out in the <laughs> 70s and 80s you know just like bruce yeah. Poitation, you know um Rush Shaw Brothers. Yeah, just that sort of thing. And I just absolutely dove into it. Um a couple of years later I started boxing. That's probably off the back of reading all these. The only mm. caveat I'll have again is I don't like the satire ones that satirize it. You know, you was it you, we got a few movies like that, didn't we? And we got a few comics like that. I don't know. But I I really see it as a psychological study of the people in them. So mm. the whole sort of um you know, the classic trope, isn't it, of martial arts, comics and movies is two men look at each other, you know, across the street, ready to fight and the fights were ready won. And, you know, the training and the, a lot of really good martial arts um, writers and artists do study the form as well, hmm. which I really like. You look at uh, Doug Munch or Mike Barron or Paul Galassi or um, a lot a lot of um, even Claremont, they studied some stuff, you know, they knew what they were talking about when they talked about the style of martial arts. Um, so consequently... If I saw something on the shelf um, that was a martial arts, strictly a martial arts book, um, I would pick it up. I think there's also some great samurai books out there, which I kind of I kind of class as well. Yeah. Um, 
I wrote a few down. So obviously I'm okay if um, Iron Fist, Sons of the Tiger, Richard Dragon, and Karate Kid, which is I know it was a spin-off of the Legion, but I bought anyway because they had karate in the in the, the title. Um Infinite Kung Fu, um, Judo Master, Fist of the North Star, Crime mm-hmm. Freeman, Firepower, uh, even One Punch Man, Usagi, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Green Hornet and Kato, Electro, which is is basically kind of a martial arts assassin thing. Lone Wolf and Cub, and yeah. by Koiki, I think is just amazing. Deadly Hands of Kung Fu magazine, which had all sorts of things in it. Archer and Armstrong, um, Katana, Ninjak, Shaolin Cowboy. It's treated in different ways. And, you know, Shaolin Cowboy is almost like a horror martial arts, isn't it? You know, mm-hmm. um, Archer and Armstrong is a sort of magical martial arts book. But even even there was that period of Green Arrow where, you know, you see a Shaolin temple and, you know, all this sort of thing as well. And I just I just really like that because it, it strips it back. We don't have that whole, oh, yeah, but he's got, you know, he can fly or... You know, or he, he's got a, a sword made of, of ghosts' bones or something. You know, it's just these two men fighting each other. And I think that as a dynamic, it's why people watch boxing, yeah. let's face it. You know, yeah. as a dynamic, I think it, it's it's a great theatre. It has the opportunities for great drama amongst it as well. And I think when you get books like Shang-Chi, where when it's done well, it's not been done like this anymore, you get that really great inner monologue mm. of how he's thinking and how he's approaching fights. And the fact that these people, you know, he lives in, he wants to be a pacifist and stuff like that. There's some great psychological stuff that's played with. And consequently, if there's a comic that comes out about martial arts, then I'll buy it. I mean, it goes back yeah. to stuff I was watching as a kid, like the water margin as well and stuff like mm. that. You know? mm. um, and I, I just really like it as a genre. I think it's it's done so well by certain people and not so well by others, I think. Again. Okay. It's a hard one because, especially if you've got characters that kind of interact with other superpowered characters, it, it kind of uh, a trained martial arts in the martial artist in their own comic can sort of be a force to be reckoned with. But if you put him up against like Batman yeah. saying he's the great martial artist, but then there's Superman, it's kind of like, well, it yeah. doesn't really matter now. But yeah. uh, I definitely agree with you. Kind of like when when they're done done well and done right, they they can be fantastic. Yeah, I think you can, mate. Yeah, I think there's so many opportunities. In them for the for the artist as well to show mm. stuff. Oh, no, really good. Most recent one I think of is the old uh, Edison Neos. Uh, oh oh yes. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's one. It's got a yeah, real understanding definitely. of uh, the genre and how it works and it its tools and how to deploy them. Yeah, fantastic yeah. comic. That's my one, guys. Okay, so we're down to that. Is it the number one now? Yeah. Uh, me, we're rolling on at the time. This is one going to be long. Yeah, mine's very quick. <laughs> my number one. Okay. So we've done yours, Tom, haven't we? So it's Dice of Life. Yep. You done all mine. Uh, yep. So Dan's next. And mine's the fucking absolute titan, the, the 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 granddaddy, and that's fucking superheroes. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, it just looms large over everything for me. It was like my first taste of crack. The uh, superhero <laughs> comics and just everything for me just relates <laughs> back to them. I just yeah. I, I don't yeah. I can't I can't express I mean I've worked it out earlier I've been reading superhero comics for 50 years this year yeah and I've read superhero comics pretty much every day of my life for 50 years there's nothing there that is as consistent as that and yeah. it's just weird isn't it I've never sort of stopped to try and work out or explain to myself why I enjoy watching and reading comics about people in weird fucking clothes with stupid powers yeah. you know but it's just an obsession of ours isn't it it really yeah, is just, mm-hmm where we started you know and where right. i continue and a lot of us continue you know i don't think i've ever like you just brought that up i don't think i've ever reflected on that ever no, yeah you mentioned that's the first time i've actually ever considered <laughs> reflecting on that it's weird, isn't it yeah yeah that's that's an odd one yeah but i think like it just i don't know it's just the, the kind of the whole storytelling the kind of real kind of moral good versus evil and it, it's a theater isn't it yeah it's 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 a it's a theater played large you know it's they wear their emotions on their sleeves and um you know it, it, it's kabuki theater it's you know shakespeare it's all sorts of things with these people you know often their characters are represented by their represented by their their costumes aren't they mm. all sorts of yeah. things going on and this it's almost it plays to our ocd collector mentality doesn't it where you know, I mean, we've got to know who that character in that costume is. And we're terrible encyclopedias of nonsense, aren't we? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all of us can say, oh, yeah, that's that's Superman from the 50s, that one, because you can tell yeah. from the shape of his shield. I mean, what fucking use is that? Yeah. In Encyclopedia really? of cobblers <laughs> yeah. that's brought up about these yeah. fictional characters. <laughs> yeah. But like you, you, uh, Richard Sheaf, I was listening to your uh, podcast, T, when you talk about Crime Freeman. Yeah. And that very much Western thing of every comic ending in a kind of like cliffhanger. 
And then the next issue would be half of it would be resolving the cliffhanger. And then the next half of the comic book would be setting up the next cliffhanger that it would end on. Yeah. And that would, that would basically be it lurching from one disaster to the next. And you're mm. constantly fucking out. How's he going to get out of this? And yeah. 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 It's, it's just kept us on the edge of our seats in, in, and ripped money out of our wallets now for fucking all these years, you know? So, and it's obsession. We're obsessed. With, well, with comics yeah. at all, but a lot of us are obsessed with superheroes and fucking ridiculous. I mean, it really is. Why am I? Why do I read yeah. a Batman comic well, every week of my life? It's just a nonsense, you know. I think I don't. I don't can't really speak too much, so much for what there are now. But when you you first take on the initial concept of stuff like the Hulk, and you've all fucking gone absolutely nuts at times, and you feel like it's kind of almost like a different person because you've yeah. got so angry, and then that taps into that, and that's a real thing that everyone can. There's an aspirational edge to you it. You can understand there? it, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. if I fucking really went mad and went hulked out. Uh, <laughs> well, or, I've uh, Hulk smashed a few ladies in my time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, like Batman, you've, you've been wronged and like you want to kind of bring some uh, justice or right to the world or something. I guess these kind of I th- I think, yeah, concepts and I stories. think one of the most important things about the genre, and it is the genre that, that you know, these sort of stories just dragged me into comics. Um, you know... Even though people put lofty thoughts, or you know, they can do all kinds of essays or prose or whatever you want, this is fucking fun, man. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, love see, I love seeing yeah. Batman punch someone. I yeah. love it. It's mad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We, we, we. So much of our comic reading life is is basically people beating people up. You know, yeah. the old extreme yeah. violence. You know, it's good, just good like versus constant, evil. The bad guys get what they deserve, sort of thing. Um, and like if you if you give and that's the problem with some comics is like if you give certain comics to a kid and sort of say read read this 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 is a great superhero comic and they read it and it's something like you know a, a deep dive into Batman's psychological trauma it's it's not like this is fun no it's yeah. not no it's not <laughs> yeah. um, and that's why sometimes I understand that it's a fertile um sort of genre for exploration in in you know for academia and all of this stuff and that, that's fascinating but that's well that's that's not for me like um like the grant morrison super god all, all things like that I, i'm just not interested in it because superheroes for me they are they're a getaway they're they're the fun they should be mm. you know it's weird as well it's not up and i know this, this doesn't apply anymore because i don't really fucking care anymore but it's also the one that i would be least able to tell joe public especially joanne public that i read you know mm-hmm. so if someone said to you oh i've heard you read comics you go oh yeah but mostly intellectual graphic novels yeah, you know yeah, so i would say oh yeah i fucking love the justice league i'll tell you now yeah you yeah. know it's like that you wouldn't be able to say it, would you i don't care now but in, in the past it's almost like it was almost like a bit of a dirty secret <laughs> you know it's weird isn't it yeah. i don't know i don't know i think now superheroes Maybe uh, yeah. have less yeah, of a stigma a because of those movies because mm. be- because so many people went to those films you now almost get off with it I think now if you tell somebody you read something like Robert Crumb they're like what yeah and, and you you say what it is and they're like oh fuck. You yeah think, you, they think you're some sort of deviant um, whereas I if wonder- you said oh I, I'll read Iron Man they're like oh fuck, yes oh yeah on. have you seen the movies have you seen the movies yeah exactly oh, yeah. but I, I, I tell <laughs> I actually think it might be coming round I'll tell you why obviously. We're all big fans of Celebs Go Dating on this show. And um, I was watching <laughs> Celebs Go Dating the other day, and there's a woman on it who's just horrific, you know, plastic surgery, everything. And she goes, uh, and she was going about the bloke she'd like to meet. And she went, I don't want anyone who's into that Marvel shit. I thought, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Fucking brain of Britain. You know, it's like that, you know. Yeah, so what do you mean, uh, the MCU or the comics? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Specify what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was going to bring it up in your point, Vince, about like the Grant Morrison Super Gods. I, I don't mind that as a change of pace or a change of flavor, but I don't want that to be the main fucking course. Yeah, you know what I mean? jumps on that bandwagon. Yeah. yeah, I don't want constant deconstruction of superheroes. and. I also don't think tales, that, so just... I mean, in my personal opinion, those sort of tales aren't part of the over the overarching narrative of because superhero genres that is the continual rolling ball the story <laughs> is always moving it's always going yeah. forward um whereas tales like that are more like they're the mini series they're they're the else worlds they're you know I they're know. watchmen yeah watchmen yeah. was yeah. its own story for 12 issues yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's where it should stay for me yeah so i sometimes i find it jarring when like say you have Captain America and then, like, oh, this issue edition dealing with sort of 
race and systemic abuse of like superpowered characters. And uh, in the next issue, Cap fights the Serpent Society. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's quite hard for me to sort of <laughs> marry those two fucking angles up. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they've been juggling those sort of things within Marvel and DC for years. I mean, look at hard traveling heroes. You know, the big speech yeah, about like yeah. doing it for the blue skins and the black. The, right. What about the black skins and stuff? And then it's like now Green Arrow has to put, get an arrow through a target that's through a bridge, through a tiny yeah. hole in about yeah. two seconds flat, or everybody will die. And it's like yeah. Yeah. Right. attack of the horseman. You know, it's the next <laughs> issue. <isn't> it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like God, but there it is. It's a total balance tonight, and there's there's a place for all of it. Really, there is yeah, a place yeah, for all yeah, of it. There's yeah. a place for the pseudo serious stuff. There's a place for the total bombast and crazy stuff. There's a a place for all the big ideas and and turning superheroes on the head and everything. It just depends on your mood. Yeah. At the end I of think, the day, yeah, yeah. I think as well. I think we need to be careful not to turn. I, I I totally agree, and I think you're right. And there's and that's why something like Black Label, for example, exists. I kind of like that. I kind of dig that. That's, mm-hmm. that's there and we're getting those stories but i think we also i think every, every week I, I move more towards this where everyone's every every comic should be someone's first i almost think like we all show the mainstream of comics you know the little you know stuff that you see in the shops mm-hmm. there should it should be um admissible to the general public picking up a new issue mm-hmm. and if you read i can't fucking hell i've read detective comics for um well my whole life and i, I got completely confused who over a character was i'd read fucking for years the other day you know, it's like, who is this again? You know, it's like that almost, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, not to kind of uh, spoil it, but what, like with a manga, that's what they've done. You can go in and pick up the book, but yeah. one, you're in. Whereas comics is a bit kind of like, oh, fucking hell. It's a bit more they've, treacherous. Yeah, they've done well actually to translate, because we were reading this thing earlier about it's transla- the Netflix popularity of anime has rebounded on the sales of um, manga in shops. as a big mm. reason why it's now popular and... It's Without doubt. The fucking sales of it are through the roof. It's incredible. Yeah. And you, you, you can watch One Punch Man, then you can go and buy the comics if you're lucky enough to find <laughs> them these days. But yeah. Without yep. doubt. Yeah, nice cool. one. And we've got one one number one left, which is V. Uh horror for me. Okay. Hey. Yeah, nice. It's the big one. We obviously we have a Halloween show. Speaking of which, did you see um Mike Barron's essay on what how to write a good horror this week, by the way? No. No. Oh, I'll send you to it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah it sounds great. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll put that um link in the show yeah. um yes horror it, it encapsulates lots of different sort of tales and and stories as we said with all, all of them but horror stories always just my jam it's my favorite it's my favorite genre of movies you know horror art is is just awesome um it's always when i'm thinking about writing stories or just mon- I'm, a, I'm a monster kid i always have been whether it be giant monsters alien monsters um you know the, the vampires, werewolves, mummies, all of that. That is my jam. And moving beyond it, and like certainly with independent comics, um, more so than bigger publishers, um, is where horror thrives. Um, and whether it be you know just tales, I mean, Stray Dogs again was another one we've talked about in many different books. And there, there can also be a lot of the like the things I recommend. Like Vinyl was a serial killer book, quite gory. Um, had a certain sense of humour to it. Um, homesick pilots. If you go back a, a, around a lot of my recommendations, there's always a horror vibe to a lot of the stuff I recommend. Um, that being in mind, when you've got a favourite genre, you can be quite picky about it. <laughs> if you yeah, like it should hor- be. Yeah. If you like horror movies, you know that 90% of horror movies are dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not to say they're not enjoyable, but there is, and uh, certainly we all we've all got that sort of the, the, whether it be the books or the the movies or whatever that we take glory. There, there's a glory in how bad a movie is, but sometimes when you get something really good, it sticks with you. Um, and certainly, like always, a go to um, like the Junji Ito stories. Yes, that just stick with you. That I've seen some wonderful indie sort of ghost stuff. I didn't think books would be able to creep me out until we did this show and I discovered other books. There was never mm. really anything in a lot of lot of the comics I read that I was like, "Oh God, that you know sends a shiver at your spine." All the images really stay with you so much until I started stepping 
beyond my borders into the like the small press and indie world and discovering all these books and realizing that people and it, you for me it usually is a narrative that is it is tell don't show i know it's comics but you can still freak people out by their with their imagination um but there's also a place for like a nice gory horror comic here and here and there if it's done well but a lot of the stuff that creeps me out is like a good horror, like a good ghost story. You don't you don't see it, but you feel it, and you in it's, it's it invokes emotions. Um, a diff as, as I always say when we talk about the the genre, a difficult genre to get right, but when you get it right, it's so satisfying for me. Um, like I say, so that that's always just that's just my go to, just just pump it into my veins. Um, but I don't I don't. Comics don't give me nightmares. Have you ever read a book that's giving you a sleepless night? And, and, uh, uh, now, Tony, don't d- do any filth. <laughs> only, only some of the and only some of the crap I get sent. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you know, um, has there anything really been so sort of evocative that it's, it's no. you've been? Yeah, I've, I've got enough know. darkness in my life I, for I've nightmares. Never, I've never fodder. had that. Yeah. I've never had that. There's so. um, there's one that I got a glimpse of recently and it kind of stuck with me i didn't actually read the whole thing it was one of dave's it was jay stevens dwellings oh i know that one yeah i've not read oh, it but I know that, yeah like it looks like it's it looks like it's a kiddie affair when you look at the, the front of it it looks like sort of i don't know like a, a little orphan annie or uh, archie or something but the story inside holy shit it was like a it was like a folk horror but i'm i mean like proper terrifying I genuinely was speaking about it with the guys and said, I've not actually been freaked out. I, I find it very difficult for a horror to get that, like you say, but mm. that that really freaked me out. Really reading it like, holy shit. And there's, I think there's only like two issues of it out at the minute or something, but they're oof, okay. they're cracking. They're really good to get. Um, and my friend Dahmer, to a degree, I know I mentioned that again. Yeah, but that, yeah, no, that... no, certainly. Like, and there's a lot of um, like the true, and it also links into true crime stuff. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be a, a recommendation this week, but because I, I haven't finished it, so I'm not. But I, um, book that I that I showed the guys before is "Did You Hear What Eddie Gein Done?" Oh yeah, by Howard Schechter oh, okay. and Eric Powell, which I'm currently reading at the moment. A beautiful book. Um, it's. I'm not going to recommend it this week because I want to finish it. I want to really suck that in. But that's another example of just the truth of it is, mm. oh, oh, God. That, that horse cock from Twist, from, was it Crossed? That Cross. gets in my mind occasionally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's not just that comic either, is it? Um, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's just lots of, just so much to horror that I just love it. it like, like, I think, all of the genres we've mentioned, there's so much fruit isn't there really on the trees you can do so much with it and there's so much yet to be done with it i think that i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to these genres all the all those moments that dan describes in each of these genres where people says oh, i've got a science fiction book i've got a crime book here's the pitch and i go what and yes. turn, anything that turns my head because i think it's getting harder for me to really stop and think i need to check this out i don't know why okay. I, I i think that's you know there's so much stuff out there you're drowning in comics a lot of the time but when a comic stops and and forces you to take notice you know i'm, I'm looking forward to more books like that in all the genres we've talked about i think mm-hmm. um, but because the genres are so major i think from what we've talked about <laughs> i mean for a superhero book to be one to really stop you in your tracks it's got to do some hard work, mm. especially an independent book, mm-hmm. hasn't it? Um, and I, yeah, so yeah, I, I actually think that it's difficult, other than obviously Dan, to pull off a superhero book in an yeah, indie market. I agree, I think, because yeah. they've got so many. It's tied up so much in the tropes and styles and designs and everything yeah. of the mainstream too. You know, yeah, yeah. It's what you see the most of though, and like a <clears throat> a lot of those small press groups I'm a part of, like they all. Yeah. Everyone wants to have a crack at doing a superhero. Well, the US, you, you yeah. guys in the US, you know, the superhero genre is the number one. It's um, mm. by far, and deservedly so, because, like, you know, we all love them, I think. Without any elaboration, has anyone got any worthy mentions? You just say, just say, well, I'll, I'll give you my two. I've got comics that come from pulps. I love that. 
Yeah. And um, comics with an element of psychedelia in them. I quite like Ooh, that as well. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I've, um, I think it's because of like um, one of the things that brought me to this Ed Gein book um, was something slightly factual, like Kent State. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. that real, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh, wow. Documentary and comics it's, almost. It's, yeah, yeah, some, yeah, something yeah. Is, is comics, but you can take a learning, you can, you can experience a, a moment in time in some ways and hopefully educate yourself. Yeah. Um, Tom, uh, probably sort of surreal stuff. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just something about, you know, Jim Woodring that kind of thing. But even stuff that kind of takes just a sort of surreal tint to it, um, and probably western as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we've yeah. been doing some westerns recently. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love a good western. Yeah. Yeah. Le- Leap Frog get off of that, and Vince's one. It's like that historical stuff that's really well observed. Mm-hmm. And he, he kind of like getting insight into the time, uh, be it war, like uh, Sarah, Sarah, yeah. or yeah. Uh, yeah. Desert Star, or anything like that. It's just kind of, yeah. yeah and it, 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 it's a real skill, <clears throat> I think, <clears throat> between meticulous research and entertainment. Because, <clears throat> you know, comics, let's be honest, you know, no matter how what, what they are, they're a form of entertainment. They, You know, we're gathering something from them. If, if sometimes it can, when it's factual it can be so dry that it might as well just be a reference book but for me like like, like something like kent state absolutely sings and i learned so much from that book from the way it's told and the way it's mm-hmm. researched there's, there's a real balancing act isn't there to from fact to sequential i think yes yeah. you know there you go well, well that was a, that was a good choice a good yeah uh, Good guest to talk about it. Nice one, yes. guys. Well, yes. yeah. so, um, but what were what are your favourite genres? Are they are they um some that we haven't talked about? Surely there's a million genres out there. Or is it like one of those things where there's only one genre and they're all a boning. Yeah. <laughs> the boning right genre. Comic. Um and we don't mean the bone comics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Definitely not all edges, um, <laughs> but but no. If you've got any genres that you like, then let us know. Um, whether it be um, on t- Twitter at the Awesome Pod, like keep keep the conversation going on our Slack channels, keep the conversation going on Facebook, etc. Um, just yeah, let us know because th- this sort of stuff is a real sort of like sat around the the coffee table, the pub table. It's, this is a conversation that we could have for hours and hours and hours, but we can't. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we're, the Horlex is kick, kicking in, and we're all feeling a little bit sleepy. Yeah. So we've got to do. <laughs> so we've got to do the rest of the show. And speaking of which, it's time for the shout outs. We've got a few shout outs this week, gents, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. So a big shout out to everyone in the drink and draw. Thanks for coming along. That was a nice chilled one. Very good. Um, and big welcome to the new Slack members. I think we've got three new ones this week. Welcome. Uh, just like to say. Sorry, go on, go on. So everyone was kicking themselves that someone put up a couple of uh, really great comics for sale in the uh, pound shop, and they they got snatched up immediately. And everyone was like, "Oh fuck, I wish I'd have got that." <laughs> okay, yeah. So you can join. You can join all the channels. Have an yeah. explorer of the channels when you join up because there are quite a few going on. Um, not everyone's in everything. Um, Hank Fur is going on sale this week. I'm just waiting. It's, I think he's arriving back from the printers tomorrow, so um, that'll be on sale. And there'll be some Atomic Hercules stickers as well going up. Um, thanks to Eamon for sending me a DVD for a future project we're working on. And also thanks to Mr. Strott, who sent me a lovely um, post-it note, Master of Kung Fu, this week. Uh, I miss Matt Strott. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got a shout-out hey, for a Kickstarter. I put a call-out for Kickstarters uh, on our ACP Twitter. Loads of people liked to retweet it, but very few responded. And this is one of them. Uh, I think you're going to like the sound of this, Vince. It's called Breakneck Fantasy Anthology, issue one. Five action-packed comics from some of the best up-and-coming creators across 32 pages of magic, muscle, murder, and mayhem. And the five stories... Some of my favourite M-words. So many yes. M's it spells... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sorry. They said they, said they couldn't do it as well. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's got, first story, when, when I freeze hell over, an ice switch charges down the path to conquer hell. Meat, brotherly rivalry is brutal when it comes to orcs. Jack and Beans, the legendary hero must find the dragon stone before the amateur adventurer annoys him to death. Uh, Tale of Caron, Zaron, a young prince relives the downfall of his royal family and Crypt Sisters, monster hunting is a family affair. There you go. That okay. Kickstarter's running right now and you've got 21 days if you listen to this podcast tomorrow, which is the 7th of February. Nice. Go check it out. 
Good. There you go. Any others? Tom, have you got any? Um, yeah, well, aside from uh, shouting out for my uh, my TCS crew, yeah. Hey. Uh, aside from shouting out that, because uh, Dave's obviously got all his comics up um, at the minute on Fred Egg Comics. Yep. Uh, I think it's Big Cartel. Um, and well, he's, he's got his comics to sell as well, not he? Yeah, he does, but I, I don't know. He's got them in shops. He's not got them up online yet, but he does have a new uh, one out. He does have a new one out called Once Upon a Time During the Ice Age. Um, if you look him up at Mike Sadaka. Um, and just even give him a message, it'd probably be good. But aside yeah. from that, yeah, he sent me a copy, I really liked it actually. Yeah, oh, did he? Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I liked it. Um, good. Aside from that, there's a, like a video project thing that's up on YouTube called um, I think it's Creating Comics UK. Okay, I, I watched a bunch of their videos. Um, they've got like a second series or something that's coming, they do it in like sections, they put them up like a, a video a week for. One week in, uh, I think it's this coming February or something, but they did a first series and it was a lot of people that I knew within uh, the sort of Dundee scene that were on it. There was other folk as well, but there was... Uh, no, it was whole people are on it, mate. Um, I, I think I think Olivia's in this next series, Olivia Hicks, um, but Rebecca Horner was on it the last time. I did an interview with her a wee while back, um, right. which is a pal, pal of mine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, there was loads of there was loads of folk, and I'm just totally blanking on uh, who they were. Uh, oh God, it was loads of different people. Um, no worries, no worries. Yeah. yeah, there was loads, of, but they cover like loads of different things. They they talk about like their favorite comics. They do like uh, topics like traditional traditional comics culture and things about you know gender and reading relations and all that kind of stuff. But I think the last one was predominantly they were trying to focus on sort of the female creators within comics but then they opened it up for this next series um so yeah it's creating comics uk i think if i remember rightly off the top of my head um, who's running that who's the sort of organizers of that god knows i'm no, sorry mate okay, i no couldn't, I couldn't sorry, tell no, you. i don't yeah. want to fire loads of questions at you man just no 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 it. not yeah, at all yeah. um no but i couldn't tell you who actually runs it um i think they they spoke to me a wee while back when i was um when the, the sort of series one had went up and I'd liked a couple of videos or something, but I couldn't tell you who it was. And no. I just noticed, I just noticed it because it was people that I'd recognized within comics that were on the videos, you know, yeah. they were, they were worth checking out. They were really, they were, it was good just finding out people's um, thoughts and opinions and stuff. It's just short videos on, on, up on YouTube. Um, cool. Same, same kind of vein. Um, as like little videos and stuff that they put up around the time of like SPX and stuff, but it's more around this sort of scene as opposed to the US scene. Oh, cool. That was good. Yeah. Nice. One. Nice. nice. Yeah. So without further ado, it is a time to recommend some books. I don't have one this week because like I said, I'm uh, halfway through a book. So, nice. so get so I've get got, your, I've get got your two. boots ready because I'll probably be uh, recommending it very soon in a, in a show. But, um, yeah, you got t- you got two, Tony. So start and start. And so finish start, this off. And then oh, we can get to yeah. the next. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So my first one is a book called Subscribe by Harry Dean Wilmot. Um, when we look back on the lockdown, I think we should. I think everyone's sort of remembering lockdown comics as all these stories about people stuck in their houses, you know. But I think we need to remind ourselves of the dark side of what has happened. And we all let's let's imagine. Let's try and imagine someone. So we all know someone who's been like this, the person I'm about to describe. Let's make a name up. Let's just say Ned. Should we say Ned? Um, Something maybe similar to that. They spend their life in their bedroom and they live with their mum. You know, they, um, even though they're in their sort of late 20s, early 30s, they've never really had a partner or even, you know, even a sort of short sexual interlude, romantic interlude. And they're kind of sad, lonely wankers but they live their lives through being online. We all know people like that, I'm sure. We can all think of someone. Lives on Twitter, maybe, for example. Maybe on Twitter. That's a good example, mate. Yeah, maybe <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, maybe on podcasts, you know. But the so this is a story of that sort of person, a disgusting, utter lump of a human being addicted to the small sort of dopamine hits that social media and video streaming deliver. He virtually never washes. Um, he um, does things sexually to himself on live stream, and while his mum shouts through the door that his tea is ready, um, he even has a little a little accent in his pants. You know, he's, he's sort of utterly unlikable. 
but like just is desperate for sort of likes and hits online. Um, validation. Sorry. And validation. And yeah, absolutely. So he just so he's just really he gets really excited because he's had over a, a thousand views on his video channel, although he does actually have two hundred videos on there. Um, and although one of them is a trip, he took a trip to the, maybe he's a Thomas the Tank Engine fan or something. He takes a trip to the train museum and that gets 400 views for some strange reason. So he gets very excited. So he thinks I'm going to make something of this. So he starts um, gorging himself on um, on camera with spaghetti and he gets his, he tries to develop this catchphrase of more spaghetti. But what, of course, what happens with the internet and with this story is um, the cool kids get hold of it. One of them recognises them, someone they knew related to someone who went to school with him and they start ironically liking the videos which only encourages him to do like more and more fucking weird and at, let's face it tragic things and um he gets really carried away with it uh, and then unfortunately these people start leaving things comments on like outrageous comments on some of the videos one of them accusing him of being a virgin and all this sort of thing and it suddenly hits him um that he's being made fun of you know, people are liking his stuff because they're laughing at him. Um, although he is, it, it doesn't have the balance of, oh no, but he's really a nice person. He's not, he's just horrible, this person, you know. Uh, he doesn't realise that it's, it's because he's become an utter joke to the internet. Um, and it's just hilariously played out for laughs. It doesn't end, I want to ruin the ending, but it does not end in an uplifting way that you expect it to end. And I really like that they didn't go that sort of cliche way oh no but he thought yeah, they all become friends you know there's none of that crap that happens in it it's very nihilistic the story um it's got a real sort of underground feel to it the art in it is and is um but it's like um it's got he's got a color he colors his art on it so it's it's immensely readable it's very very readable i put a page of it on um the slack the other day and the pxd said he had a coughing fit laughing at it um which was just genius i just I absolutely loved it came out of nowhere it was another one of those impulse buys in Gosh off the shelf. That's where I got it. You can get it in Gosh. If you go to Harry underscore Dean, which is D-E-A-N-E, Harry underscore Dean underscore Wilmot, double L double T, on Instagram, you can find it. And there's a link to his Etsy store. I think this is the only thing he's got for sale on his Etsy store, but I think he has done other stuff. But I encourage you to, to follow him on Instagram and buy some of his work because I just it was just an absolute breath of fresh air. And I kind of think we forget this sort of, the insular self-obsessed side of the internet that seems to have taken over, you know, where nobody really thinks they'll have to reveal themselves in real life anymore, but they say whatever they like online. And he is a prime example of this, as are the people that then go on to troll him. Um, it's, it's an interesting dynamic that's created in what is essentially sort of quite an underground comic. Um, but yeah, subscribe, Harry Dean Wilmot, my first one. There you go. Nice. Tom, Dan, should we have a guest? Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to go with a Alonzo Sneak by Nate Garcia. Good shout. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, I got this back in the, in the summer um, through Strangers Fanzine, but I think he started putting it out himself now. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Alonzo, Alonzo Sneak is basically this character with. Out, out in the kind of west with sneakers, which is a bit strange, but hey. Um, and he has this horse Sheena that he absolutely adores and cares for. Um, and then he, when he goes in to get some food in a local bar, and then comes back out, sees that Sheena is in a bit of trouble with some horse wranglers. Um, they try to put a little bit of the moves on Sheena and Alonzo, and things get a bit hairy from there. It is all done in this kind of. Everybody always um, compares him to sort of Peter Bag because he's got this, yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, this sort of elongated, stretchy um, perspective with with humans and characters. Uh, but Nate is actually a caricaturist at a zoo. <laughs> yeah, so this is great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I heard this. This is just a genius. That's his day job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I think he's only he's only like nineteen or twenty or something. Yeah. Um, actually, may, may even be only eighteen. I don't know, but uh, but he he is a cartoonist at a zoo, so that's where he sort of exaggerated features and sort of stretchiness and on his characters come from. It's it's all black and white. He is doing color strips on Instagram at the minute. I think it's like a follow up story to the first Alonzo sneak. 
Um, he had Alonzo um, appear in his comic Horn Rim before that as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That had a, a couple of other strips in it as well. But it's just, you know, it's so over the top. It's so absurd. Some of the dialogue is just unbelievable. You know, like it, there's a bit where there's snakes in Alonzo's bed and he's going, God damn fucking vipers in my bed. But every single one of those words has an exclamation mark at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, fuck, fuck, shit, fuck, ah, and like running about. And it's just all on this page. And I know people put stuff like that up, but when it's done with this really exaggerated, like everybody's got really wide open mouths and stretched out smiles and stuff, it just... It really accentuates yeah. the rest of the comic, you know. And I think I, I saw him first in Strangers, and I, that you're right, man. It's that style that really does stop you and think, oh, that's really different. Yeah, you know? it is. It's, it's so different. Yeah, and uh, it, it was. It, there are only sort of one pages out off the top of my head. In I think there were one pages were they in Strangers, or they were shorter. And it, it, this dude, like Jasper Jubeville, they're fucking. They're like children. Yeah, you know what I mean, I've got yeah. socks older than those dudes. <laughs> yeah, but they're producing some really interesting comics that are really sort of pushing stuff. Yeah, yeah he's really good. Yeah. When you're hearing when you're hearing from him that he, you know, he started making comics for his teacher in grade school, you're just like, what the hell? Like this is Firstly, a movie. Like, don't be a creep all your life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he's he's like, oh yeah, he used to make these like 30, 40 page comics for my teacher. I'm like, what? It's just unbelievable. Yeah. And then he's making these absolute masterpieces. But they, they totally zip through and he's got these really weird ideas throughout them and it's just incredible. And it it really plays on this um this black and white art as well. I don't know if he's gonna start putting them out in colour or not when he starts printing them like the newer strips that he's got up on, on Instagram. He's he's changed right. his changed his style ever so slightly that it's not as detailed, but it still works. It still looks like him, you know. Um, I think that strip they put up on Instagram is Muscle Horse. Um, There's a little bit of the, um, i use this phrase again, a little bit of the Yellow Submarine about his style as well. This is strange, yeah. trippy stuff, okay. isn't it? Yeah, it's, all... it's, to go, it's to go back to the old honourable mission that said it was surreal. It really yeah. is surreal yeah, yeah. in a way. You know, there's a guy, you know, what is it, two pages in and there's a there's a guy's head blown off, you know, and you actually see, like, brain ex- excrement a bit of his eyeball flying out and i'm not talking like you know you, you think of the eyeball flying out you think of the the, the round ball with a wee tendril coming off no this is actually yeah. just like a whole cloth very detailed bit of skin with an eyebrow still attached flying through the air you know <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's the sort of stuff you would have found in zap or weirdo or something like that yeah you know for me it's not even that it's not even it's not even Mad Magazine. It's more that underground feel to it for me. Yes, which I kind of like. It's yeah. completely an underground feel to it. It's yeah. and it's done in this sort of larger sized, maybe just short of being a four um, okay. comic as well. Um, but it's just incredible, and it, it's like you say that it's just something a bit different. It's something that visually, even from the front cover, you're like, holy shit, what's this? You know I mean, yeah. it's it, I, I love a good visual to start off, but to go along with this, not even it's not even like wordy or anything. You can zip through it in about a minute, but it's just it's incredible. It's what I think they are doing. What comics should be? They're 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 making yeah. these really interesting, different, differently drawn comics that just zip by and are almost disposable. But you wouldn't want to get rid of them because they look so fucking beautiful, you know. But there's no mistaking who drew that. Do you know what I mean? You yes, see that from exactly. a distance and you go, yeah. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Like you, you say, the him and yeah. him and Jasper are just like they're just breaking down walls with this stuff. It's unbelievable. And it's it's crazy how quickly they've got known as well. Yeah. You know, considering they only both of them really only started putting out stuff from like what, 2019, 2020? Yeah, I'm gonna say. Yeah, it's only a couple of years, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and now they're like the hottest shit. I mean, Simon Hanselman speaks about Jasper and uh, yeah, Patrick Sparrow was talking time. about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. speak about them all the time, and I'm just like, wow, it's just, it's just utterly incredible. I don't know if, I don't know if you can still get them through strangers. There was copies of them in Gosh. Oh, okay. Um, right. Okay. Were, yeah, there was. Yeah. Copies in there. I yeah. didn't see any in there yesterday, but yeah, can't yeah, remember. they may well still be. Yeah. There's, uh, but Nate 
did another version of it. It's been printed in French as well. They're buddies, um, aren't they? Him and Jubaville. They do videos together. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They speak to each other, slag each other off, and stuff That's online it. as yeah, well. Yeah. But there's. Um, yeah, there's another version with a different cover uh, that's quite nice. I think that went up on on Nate's. I think he's got a big cartel or or something along those lines as well. Right. Um, but it's something that I spoke about quite recently was that it might be hard to get because I think postage will be through the roof. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the problem. That's why Gosh is so valuable for us because they yeah. do and they put their stuff up on their site as well. Greg was saying last week. Mm-hmm. We put the small. He, he, I caught him yesterday morning because he was going. That's what you do, and he says, "Oh." I'm going through all the small press packages, which I'm guessing some come from the fact that we had him on the show as well, which is quite nice to know. But mm-hmm. Yeah, he gets he, he was going through it all. He said there's loads here. Yeah, so there's I'm interested the, else is good. There's not not everything is up on Gosh's site, but I'm I'm sure okay. if you, I'm sure if you got in touch with them, and yeah, obviously yeah. it's obviously because you know they've only got so many members of staff, they've only got yeah. so much time to get it all up. So it makes sense if there's not everything up there especially with yeah. the small press stuff coming in the way it does there's only five I'm issues sure or something what's the point sometimes it's going to fight yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so but i'm sure if you get in touch with them they'd be able to you know so I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that off of, off of no, in fact i know they will sure. yeah yeah because i've yeah. done it yeah yeah they would be yeah um but yeah alonzo sneak nate, nate garcia definitely worth a look <laughs> even just look him up on just to see him on um on instagram i think he's on instagram as like at horn Rim comics or something like that cool yeah Good chat, man. Nice. Good. Should Dan. I do my last one? Oh, I've got my... oh no, Dan. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, mate. Yeah, you, we've you spoken about it this week, and most people have been crowing. In fact, they've got a copy of it. That's uh, Adam Phelps' Deadlines. Yeah, I've got mine through. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. I was just see people it... think that that's a parody, but that's actually what he's like. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the the double layer of the joke comes in. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I, yeah. I know that's what's going on behind. He him. rang me while not only did he ring me while he was pleasuring a lady the other day and drawing a panel. He also rang me. So that's how, you know. <laughs> the, the contempt. Yeah. That, that plays into the story, doesn't he? Because there's an element where he talks about uh, sleeping with someone and then telling them to immediately go because he's got to carry on drawing. Yeah, you know, he's committed eyes to Hercules. He is committed eyes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to get a copy of this, I think you've already missed the boat because it yeah. was a kind of, you've got to get on it as soon as it's announced. And uh, uh, on a serious note, his fucking stuff's just going from strength to strength. Yeah, it's really kind of found in his feet, mm-hmm. and he, 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 his voice is just ringing out. It's great stuff. If you are a fan of his, you can get on the Patreon because Flesh and Ink, um, the new series of Flesh and Ink, begins tomorrow. And for one pound forty nine, yeah. you can read really a page a day. There That's a bargain, that classic absolute, advertising. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolute bargain. I'd, I'd get in on that. So, uh, yeah, deadlines, absolutely fantastic. I, I, I was laughing all the way through it. I've read it on the train home, which I'm not <laughs> sure. Mean, if that's why he sent not. me an early version of it on digital, and I fucking rang him and said, "You are a bleepity bleep," you know. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> lo- <laughs> lovely stuff. That's yeah, good stuff. Good. Nice, Tony. Okay, well, uh, final one: "Day of the Flying Head." By, um, <laughs> what uh, title? Yeah, by Shintaro <laughs> Kago. It's four short stories built around a theme. It will take some verbal gymnastics just to give you even a fucking clue of what a weird, strange reading experience this is. I bought it from Mansion House Press, which is a company we've spoken about a few times now. Um, they also did the On Book that I mentioned. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, they yeah, also did, that's it, which is great. They also did the Johnny Ryan book. Uh, is it Comic Books of Burning in Hell? Do you remember the really outrageous one I told you about? They also did the like Batman this. one as well, didn't they? That's right, they did. That's right, we talked about that last week as well. Didn't we? Some Comics Apocalypse or something like that. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. And Greg mentioned them as well last week from um, his experience dealing them through Goth. Gosh. So I saw this creator on Instagram um, and I have been kind of following Shintaro Kago's work for a while. And it sure is intriguing. Um, I put some pictures up on the Slack the other day. And I think the phrase you used, Dan, was fucking hell, that's brutal uh, when I put them up. Yes. Um, he's from Tokyo. Um, he's actually around the same age as me, which is, I found, I don't know why. I just find that interesting. I consider myself to be an old man. And he's, you know, past his prime and he's producing stuff like this. He, uh, his style has been taught, called fashionable paranoia, which is also, as genres go, the fashionable paranoia genre is now popular in my house. He's <laughs> published around 50 manga in Japan and a few of them are now creeping over here. Um, again, this book, unlike his other book, which I also got, which is called The Twelve Sisters of the Neverending Castle, it's not me, that's Dodge, um, is um, this one. Um, this one I'm talking about here, Day of the Flying Head, is wordless. So, which is a great selling. If you've got a sell in the rights tent on Glim, having a wordless comic does you a favour, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I'll read you the back blurb to it. 
won't tell you anything. Flying Head is a monster from legends of Southeast Asia like Thailand and Indonesia, for instance. I've drawn comics and illustrations with these subjects many times. Through these four comics, I try to tell flying head stories in a science fiction key, Shintaro Kago. That tells you nothing about it, does it? But so no. what you've got is you've got um, four stories all set around this same same theme with these floating heads. And it's um, on a, what I presume is an alien planet. It could be sort of the far-flung future and Earth has changed, but I'm guessing an alien planet and the spaceship lands. And there's a lizard who looks up at this spaceship landing and it does a sort of silence, because it's wordless, does a silent scream. And as it opens its mouth, you can see... What can, it's all in black and white. What you, I can only describe is like its internal organs spilling out of its mouth. It's or on its tongue. It's very strange. It is, talk about horror comics. This will fuck you up. It's like a cheese dream. This is. Um, it doesn't have a tongue. Instead, it's got this like weird thing. But the planet is industrialized, and you you go to this factory, and there's all these people sitting there, and they're working and packing boxes, and then you go into the canteen, and there's a couple of people who are eating what looks like that out of a bento box or a yogurt or something, and um, suddenly these people who've consume this food which is obviously poisoned or there's got it's got something in it are on the floor and they're sort of retching and writhing in agony but quickly as soon as that happens then you see their heads start disconnecting from their bodies and their heads float away but they pull with it their trachea bit of their lungs their heart a tiny you know some of their duodenum and all this sort of thing is it this mess of horrible gangly just crap follows them out and drags their organs out with their flowing heads, and it, this this is the this is the sort of I call it a disease in a way. Um, the it's almost like through the four stories you get different points of view about what happens. So some of these people, some of the humans, see the heads as a threat, and they they the army come in to destroy them, um, and they start throwing around their blood, which obviously is diseased. Um, there's some people. There's a tribe of um, uh, people in the jungle who see it as, I don't know, some kind of sort of religious sacrament. And as a kid is born, they're given a dose of the disease and their heads float away. Um, there's, which is just fucking disturbing. There's, um, and then they take this sort of strange jewel they implant in their head. So fucking hell. And there's even one where it's treated as fashion. So, you know, what? um, we have this sort of cliche view of the Japanese all like streaming to the newest fashion for a while. And you yeah. get all these kids who sort of stream to it so that they, they too can have their heads taken off their bodies and their internal organs flow about through the sky and stuff. Um, there's one bit where the heads are used by these sort of fat, lazy industrialists who lay on, lay on beds and they use their heads as almost like slave labor. There's one where the, um, the, the sort of huge lizard type dinosaur creatures are given it and their heads are weaponized in in as weapons and also as like i suppose like the version of a dinosaur jcb you know um and it's he uses it in some really interesting ways he he takes this idea which visually is very striking very disturbing but he allows it to play on a political and social socio-political stage almost so we deal with disease and um, which is very clear in it the spread of the disease the violence that is, and fear that is involved in this disease um people who have who capitulate to and give in to on purpose this disease because they think for some reason it might improve them enrich them change them move them out of their daily grind um it's some see it as evolution and there is there is a certain part of it that does show it as a sort of evolutionary process um and it also talks about how we mess with nature and how um, we are also part of that messing with nature. It's really interestingly done. There is definitely messages put in there. The art is black and white, um, hyper, hyper detailed, um, with a style that is instantly at once both um, both beautiful, but also like very, very um, visually disturbing. Um, he's heavy on line work, but he doesn't use a lot of blacks. There's no heavy shadows, so none of this is hidden in shadows. Which you know you tend with is the sort of trope we see in the style we see in a lot of horror books, um, but I absolutely I, I became entranced by it. It's something that stuck with me. I thought about it after I read it. It, it plays heavily on your nerves and your emotions and stuff like that, uh, and, but it's genuinely absolutely brilliant. Um, it really did push my buttons, and I really think there is um, an extreme imagination on show that people might draw conclu wrongly conclusions about. I think. It's also excellently paced. 
for a wordless comic, he gets across the narrative and the story through the actions and the, you know, the evolution and the, the growth and then transgression on the page. Um, yeah, it, it w- but it will keep you up at night. Genuinely, it really will. The, yeah. the book I read, The Twelve Sisters of the Neverending Castle, which I showed you the cover earlier, even the cover of that, it was a woman is split open and from her um, the JJ up to her neck, Oof. these huge Japanese castles are flowing out of her body. And, and that's just the start of this one. And that's a big, that's a big sort of a hard, you know, oversized hardback. This this comes in a soft cover. It's like um, looks like a short manga. From the, it's got like a a faux faux French flaps on it. Kind of almost looks like a dust jacket, but isn't kind of kind of thing. But yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Get on it. I got it from Mansion Press because Mansion Press comes from France rather than America. You don't pay huge amounts of postage on it, which is quite good as well. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, which is that sounds fascinating. Yeah, yeah, really, just incredible. Yeah, yeah, a real. A real moment in my reading life this year has been reading this book, and I, I, I was wow. surprised to find it. Yeah, nice. interesting. Yeah, nice. There you go. That's good. Nice. So there you go, folks. Tons to add to your wish lists <laughs> and empty your pockets, um, but be sensible with your shopping as always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tony, I'm talking to you. Oh God, it's bad uh, again this week. Yeah, but we uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this week's episode. If there's anything you want us to shout out on the show. Or that if there's any um, comic endeavours or stuff that we should be checking out or shouting out about in the show, then please, please, please let us know. You can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail.com. Follow us at the awesome pod on Twitter. If you do the book of faces, go to facebook.com slash awesome comics podcast. There's also the community group Awesome Comics Talk and the Awesome Comics Podcast Slack channel. Get in touch with us to uh, join us on there. There's lots of different chats, rooms, discussions, all kinds going on on there. Um, thank you for listening to us whether it was on the website awesomecomics.podbean.com um, if you listen to us on any other networks or like if you listen to us on Apple then please subscribe and leave a review yeah. helps helps get the word out about this show the comics we talk about the strange madness that is comics on a weekly you basis you can leave a review on Spotify as well did you know that? yes well, 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 yeah, wherever yeah. you can leave a review please leave a nice review please I haven't got a review in ages. No, oh, no. Yeah, go on. You People know. leave your reviews. Do, <laughs> <laughs> you know, do something nice for us for Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, if you listen to us on any other and networks, like, like uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if they can leave one of those. Uh, Spotify, Amazon, <laughs> I'll, li- I'll leave them something. Pod knows, Pod knife. What are the networks, networks are we on, Tony? We're on the network Pod O oh, Piss Flaps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the OPS network, as we all know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, God's sake. Last um, line of fur, thought I'd say it. Oh, God. Um, but <laughs> you should get... Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, cheers, Tom. Good, man. Yeah, thanks no for the uh, uh, insight. As always, yeah. you are very well read, you're very well educated, and you love <laughs> comics. Which is love that love comic you. smell man love that yeah. podcast and the thing is i always listen to it as soon as it comes out and i always message you with a line that's normally from mike yeah from the, <laughs> the first sort of half hour. Yeah. yeah i appreciate i appreciate that <laughs> thank you very much guys thank you for having me on and it's always a pleasure speaking to you folks honestly good stuff oh, cheers yeah. dude well hopefully we'll see you again in the flesh yes, yes. Soon. Soon. soon yes yeah soon enough um but before then where where can people find us tony Patreon.com forward slash tribute press. It's uh, £1.49 a month. There you go. Get on it. There you go. Dan. Bargain. You can find me uh patreon.com forward slash Vanguard comment. You can read Vanguard at vanguardcomic.com. But issue 20 started last week. And there's going to be three pages this week instead of two because I got confused on the days in my head. And I've, re- I've got a real, I update Wednesday, Friday, and it was Thursday when I realized that. So I thought <laughs> rather than fuck the schedule up, I'll, I'll put three pages this week. You're a mad lad. An absolute man. <laughs> I said I. I sometimes like I do it in blocks of two and four. So if there's a that week, that whole section is usually contained. I try to contain it in two weeks. In in a week, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Don't forget, uh, you can also listen to us on YouTube because Dan does it every week. Oh yes, Thanks, yeah. We got yeah. Our, our little YouTube channel. So if you want to look at the covers we, we're talking about. Uh, and I recommend I pop them in there and I try and do little bits and bobs. Mm. Nice. And if you are listening to us on YouTube, thank you for checking this out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can find me on uh, the socials at Jester Diablo. And Tom, where can people find you and that comic smell? 
Uh, you can find the podcast on SoundCloud, a uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're now newly on Amazon, Audible, all that kind of stuff. So just type in that comic smell into Google. It tends to come up with the links. And we're also on Instagram and Twitter at that comic smell, which it's me that controls it. So that's where you can get me as well. But keep an eye out because issue two is a coming, baby. Yeah, that comic yeah, smell no, comic. Yeah, it's uh, all done. It's all done. Just need to get it all to the printers and whatnot now. Fantastic. Good man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> oh, you're a real Looking boy. Looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> and do, doing, your, doing your first one's an easy thing. Doing your second one, that's that's the that's the real thing. <laughs> yeah, that hard second album. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, keep keep an eye out on, uh, on socials for that. There you go. Good man. And... Uh, Yes, keep an eye out for more great comics, folks. We hope you have a brilliant week, wherever you are in the world. We love you. We hope you're happy, healthy, and doing okay, no matter what, where you are in the world, or, or whenever you listen to this, because we are timeless. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, Dan, <laughs> Dan's timeless. I know you're timeless, aren't you, Dan? I, I guess so, Some in some aspects. What do you mean in some aspects? Not others. Well, you, you went out for yourself. I ain't going to oh do all the, oh oh. the legwork. Oh, <laughs> my mm. word. Um, <laughs> but wherever you are in the world, keep reading comics, keep making comics, keep being nice to everyone, because that's what we need more mm. in the world. Yeah. Tell me. Nobody's told me this rule. It's uh. not a rule. It's just the way you should be. Uh. Oh, God. So, so, from Dan, Grumpy Guts, Tom and myself, <laughs> have a brilliant week. Read loads of comics. And as always, what should they do, guys? Stay, Stay awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That was a good one. That was perfectly timed. Beautiful. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs>